What do you need? We got you an, uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Are we rolling, Pat? Rolling. <laughs> I have a feeling. We got you an um, uh, soy milk latte. Your favorite. Uh, my question is, how do you know what my favorite coffee is? I don't. I just. You like, like, like the internet, like Big Brother. Like you say, like, I must have said coffee on my phone one day and you got some type of link <laughs> where it lets you know the coffee I like. No, I know you like white girls. So I figured Wait a minute. A first, off, first off, yeah. first off, yeah. before we even do that, there's a room on the streets that that's what I like. Okay, I like everybody. Just so yes. happened, I spent a lot of times in creeks, rivers, and beaches, and for some reason, the African American community does not support those outdoor activities. So, I mean, for the peace to sisters, and Black Lives Always Matter, understand this: um, if you spend more time on the beach, if you spend more time kayaking, canoeing, if you spend more time having your own herb garden and stuff like that, then there's a chance that you can get with the um, Ashy Elba. That's my new name. Wait, Ashy Elba. I just, I'm the ghetto ver version of Idra, Idris Elba in my mind. I'm the hood version. I'm saying if Idris Elba smoked blunts, he would be me. Um, yeah, no, ex like exactly. Like sometimes right. I look at you and I'm like, is that e no? It's not out. Like it, I, I'm, con I'm always confused. Where's um, this little? What is your dog's name? Maggie. What are you doing? Hi, baby. How are you? Thanks for doing this. Let's give them something to talk, talk about. <laughs> Let's give them we're something we're to figure out. We're breathing on each other. We're breathing. This is called talk, negative PCR test. Talking about love. This is just called negative PCR. This is where the world needs to get back to. By the way, not no. ashy at all. I didn't take my shirt off. Bro. Not at all. I didn't take my shirt not off. in the slightest. It what happens is, sometimes. I'm pretty sure. Look, isn't it ashy? No. Mm, I'm not a great ad for your new lotion. It's a funny thing that you would say that because <laughs> I have a gift for you. Yes! <laughs> Give it to me. Lotion. I'm rich. Ultra body lotion. <laughs> More lotion for you. And it's not just a gimmick. It is filled with all type of things that white women like. It's shea butter. Yep. It's uh, mungungo oil. You're probably not familiar with that. Whenever I say that, people say, I don't think you're pronouncing it right. But it's mungungo oil. It's somewhere in Africa. Exactly mungungo oil. Mungungo. Mungungu oil. You gotta say it with like more of a coming to America voice. Can uh, we work on that? I, I um, go deeper. I'm so close to getting canceled. I feel like I shouldn't push it. You getting canceled? No, but I just wanna. I don't wanna appropriate. We, <laughs> I'm just saying we gonna talk about that because I know that was just you're just saying it close, close to getting canceled. I think the more you say I'm gonna get canceled, maybe the less you will. No, but I try to get a, ahead of it. Here's people. Here's people that get canceled, Whitney. Okay, who? It's people that feel like they need something. It's people that are desperate. Yeah. It's not people that are independent. It's not people that build their own brand. That's true. It's not people that have got people to fall in love with them for years and years. And it's usually the weak-minded people that think they're going to need something. Oh, my God, if I lose this, I lose that. But look what you've done for yourself in regards to when this person like you say, I'm going to get canceled. And this is no disrespect. You're not on TV regularly right, right now. Right. You've had that experience. You were able to be very successful at, but then at the same time, okay, what if these opportunities don't present themselves to me anymore? Yeah. What the fuck did I do? Yeah. Even when, I remember when you first started doing the podcast. We talked to each other in the we parking lot. We talked about it, and then it was like, one thing about the podcast where it gives you a sense of independence. Mm -hmm. If you feel like I don't need these people mm -hmm. to sustain a, a, a decent lifestyle. Right, right, right. Like, That's why people always like, I'll post some shit, right? And then people will be like, oh, nice knowing you, R.I.P. They give me the 21 Bye, things Bye, unfollow. Bye, yeah. unfollow. You're canceled. I'm like, you, you, like, it's hard. When you have a fan base mm -hmm. and people that love you, that small percentage to try to cancel you, they can't out overpower the yeah. people that love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know? it kind of makes you stronger. Cause then it makes you stronger. Because you, your people, like, want to get behind you and defend you. Yeah. And then it's like. And you're also just giving us more press when you guys do that. <laughs> We do it. It's just, I don't know. We, we're. Addicted. I've discovered a lot of hilarious comedians because they like got canceled. And I'm like, yeah. he's funny. <laughs> yeah. Then people like people, you know, they make comebacks, mm -hmm. and you know, I just don't believe in the whole cancel cancel culture, and especially so because I rode with Dave Chappelle, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw him pretty much say, "Fuck y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say what I want. I'm gonna do what I want when I want to do it." And it worked. Everybody don't have the balls. <laughs> Everybody don't. I, I don't know if I said this on your podcast, but I've said it on different platforms. When you consider, especially the, the business that we in, we think we're great, right? I think I'm great. You think you're great? Uh, I'm not known for my astronomical self-esteem, but I think I'm good at the things that I've worked okay, hard at. Okay, so, okay, with that said, 
when you hear somebody say something, uh, give somebody else their roses, not that you're envious or jealous, jealous, you ask yourself, I'm great, but what makes this motherfucker great? Yeah, yeah. And I was a, that was a question I asked myself with my relationship with Dave, right? And I, was, and I said that the thing that makes him great is that you have people that are funny, but you don't have a lot too many people that are funny that have what I call a Muhammad Ali moment. Mm -hmm. And a Muhammad Ali moment is when you have to stand for something, when it's you, you, you got to consider your morals, your right. values, and what's true to you. And you make decisions that don't that don't necessarily put in a situation for financial gain. Right. You know what I'm saying? Muhammad Ali said he wasn't going to fight in Vietnam and shit when he was at the prime of his mm -hmm. career, costing millions and millions of dollars. He didn't say, oh, fuck that. Uh, maybe I'll go in and then I won't be in war. They'll protect me or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he stood for something. It's about and integrity. I, the point where you're, you, you decide integrity is more important than cashing the yeah, check. Yeah, and everybody can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I, I, I value integrity, but at the same time, I like to make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's there's uh, no integrity lost in cashing the checks. Yeah, I'm like, uh, uh, we, uh, can we just get them to apologize? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, can we just say, you know, we had a bad day. When you, when you call me nigger, he walked walk, walk, walk up. Water under the bridge. He walked he walk, he walk up on the wrong side of the bed. Honestly, muscle memory. I mean, old habits die hard. It, He's, it, you know it, what I mean? It, it happens. That's why, you know, when I hear about cancel culture and stuff like that, I don't really subscribe to that, and that's one of the reasons. I'm excited about the podcast. I started and some other things. I was gonna say, I think cancel culture helped us all start podcasts in a way, so yeah. I'm a little bit grateful, because I was just like, oh my God, like we have no control over if some corporation is gonna fire us if we say Jesus Christ or so. Or you know what I found out during the, the pandemic and didn't uh, get into the podcast world? Hmm. White people have been keeping podcasts a secret. Okay, Don just said white people no. have been keeping keeping uh, podcasts no, a I secret. No, I didn't say it loud. Right. I mean, but here's what I'll say. The, no, they have it. Those ones just aren't popular. No, they the, they've been the popular ones aren't a secret. They kept it away from the black community for so many years. They let us work our sets out every day to go on the road to make the money that they make in one fucking podcast. Well, because black people like uh, usually have a, a there's a lot of untalented white men that their only option is just to sit around and talk. That's true. Black yeah. people are talented. <laughs> I was black, gonna say black people are very talented. Neil Brennan once said, Neil Brennan once said the average black person is funnier than a white, white comedian. Yeah, no, he said the average black person, not a oh yeah, not it's a funnier comedian. than a white comedian. The, yes. the, the, most of the working comedians, and it's true. Yes, yes, so. It's just something I don't know if it comes from going through so much pain. Yeah. Adversity, yeah. you know, like when things hit you so much, what do we do? We figure out a way to laugh. So that might contribute to how how tough we are and how funny we are. But it's true. Because I mean, guys, but you. not me. Not uh, uh. I did not start a podcast till like a year ago. Because you were white. As a year a, ago. But as a white woman, I basically have had it as hard as you. And uh, what? <laughs> Oh, what the fuck is going I on? I mean, as a white Time prayer. Time woman, for prayer. no, but I was just like, oh, who's going to want to listen to me talk for three hours? Like, in this business, I'm like, you always have to be twice as good to get half as much. Right. Like, you know, and uh, and the idea of just, like, guys sitting around talking, I was like, but I, what, it, like, I, no one will ever want to hear me talk. Like, right. who would want, you know, who wants to hear a white woman just talk for three hours? I didn't know that that was a business. You knew <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to break the news to you. We start off with this conversation. I got to get my sexy voice on right now. But I would pay to hear a white woman talk all day. Preferably in a bikini, preferably in a kayak, with one or then I'm the only one doing the stroking. If you ask me who I want to have a conversation, that would be you. We got you okay, some snacks. Okay, Karen. We got, we got you some snacks. What? Yo, I told you about this shit the last time I was here. What the fuck is going on? That's a better one. I told That's you the a, last time. Stop I, <laughs> trying to save my life. This is a this is a bad. I'm gonna one. die. That's that's peanut butter granola. That is so bad for you, dude. That's really unhealthy for Wait you. Wait a minute. Know how white I know you are. <laughs> no. For you to say that a granola is bad for you. It's all sugar. Granola's not no. that healthy. Granola, this granola. Let me read you the ingredients. First off, here's another Cane thing. Cane sugar? There's another thing, Whitney, I gotta stop Canola you. Canola oil. Whitney, can I stop you for? Yes. Like, what you just did now <laughs> is what all white women <laughs> do at, at, at Whole Foods <laughs> and wherever they go. White women take the longest to shop. I, and I, do, they would be in that motherfucker. Because we're in there looking for a husband. I'm just pushing yeah. around until some rich yeah, guy talks to me. Hang out in the um, in the produce section, <laughs> in the overtop of the cold section. You'll get a husband quick as shit. But, 
That's what I'm saying. If you're shopping Whole Foods, you're rich. Like, Why not through. make it with me? Is that how you just said? I've, 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 I've did an investigation, right? Uh -huh. I've actually followed a white woman shopping, right? In Whole Foods. In Whole Foods and all the places, Gelson's okay. Whole Foods and mm -hmm. stuff like that. The high-end mm -hmm. places. You know, the $15 a pound for kale places? Yeah, yeah. And you and just follow white women around. I don't follow them around. I just want to see what their buying habits are. <laughs> I was just say, LA must have gotten safer. Did the black boxes work? You can no, just follow no, white women around and no, no one comes for you? No, you just gotta have a certain confidence when you do it, you know what I'm saying? And then when you run into them, you gotta be like, oh man, I just came back from Europe. You're like, they like travel. Talk about wine and shit, talk about By travel. By the way, in a pandemic, in a pandemic, like, I just came back from Italy. They're like, get away from me. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. But what you did was, and I've seen it happen in the shopping experience, they will get something off the shelf and <laughs> They will read every <laughs> fucking thing. They know the calorie count. They know saturated fats from the other fats and shit. Yeah, yeah. And they'll do like this. Mm -hmm. One thing like this. <laughs> and they'll put that shit back. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, they put it back. It'll be all good. It'll be all good till they get to that one. Oh, no. Oh, Sodium? Hydra hydrogenated oil? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck like, that. It's not this, the $20 price that makes them put it down. No, no, it's that don't give a fuck oil. about that. And then they'll be in there for 45 minutes, and then when they get to the register, they're still in the express lane. With a fucking, with a, your favorite nuts, raw nuts, <laughs> right? Your favorite, it'll be uh, avocados. I don't avocado. fuck with avocados. They're, you don't fuck with it. They go, they go bad too quick. Like you got, if you open avocado, you it, it's like it's like uh, the time the starts ticking. Right. Like I already so got a biological clock stress rushing me. Like I don't need avocados. As soon as you open them, they're gonna turn brown, and I get too stressed. Just eat it. Do you know about avocado hand? No. What How is many people get avocado hand a year? Oh, avocado hand is when you cut through an avocado and like this, and you, stab yourself? And you cut through your hand. Oh, shit. Like, can someone look up the number of emergency room visits that happen a year from? And then it's someone, all white girls, by the way. I was getting ready to say, did it's someone all... look up who's get cut, who's stabbing himself with avocado? The avocado hand. Find out how many so, people get hurt of avocado hand. Wait a minute. Does is that the same thing in the in the hood as like blunt hand? What's blunt hand? Blunt hand is when you're trying to cut open a Philly blunt or a tobacco leaf. And it's almost the same thing as avocado. You're trying to slice the leaf and then you cut yourself. That's right. Yeah. Or maybe like getting your thumb shot off. Okay, I went too far. Th went too far. Whitney. I just want to get a thumbs what, what, up. What? <laughs> You've been following my life, right? I've been following been your life. There's certain I things have. I'm sensitive about. I'm sorry. I, this is Whitney, a, a place of Whitney, love. Whitney, Whitney. Mm -hmm. All this is bullshit. <laughs> Got it. You never really that is, cared. That I, you never cared. I, I do. How could you say that? I'm asking. You know the mental fucking stress, the PTSD. I just want to see it. That I've been dealing with I just because I was in a gun blaze and I got shot defending Maggie. Yep. Who is smaller than your thumb? Did your thumb protect her? That's the thing. It was like a shield. Uh -huh. It was like when the bun, when the, when the bullets started ringing out, it was like, remember when Ronald Reagan got shot? Was this at the cat when you stormed the Capitol? I didn't storm the Capitol. <laughs> I didn't storm the Capitol. And I'm going to tell you, white people protest a lot different than, what, than black people. And I'm not going to make this podcast black and white, but that's what we do. But here's the story. Black people, when we protest, we protest in the clothes that we had on. <laughs> We now take a break in this incredibly charming, effervescent podcast. Lack, not lackluster. Not lackluster. Not lackluster. The, uh, the, the opposite. opposite. Sparkling, effervescent. To, um, I'm going to admit something to you to guys. To talk about something just as sparkling. Student loans. <laughs> no, you guys, I need you to know that I am, I'm, I'm dating someone uh, who was in a medical school. And we I know you're dating someone. You told us. <laughs> but I just found out that he has a tremendous amount of student loans. And it, I didn't realize, like, dating a doctor, dating a vet, everyone says it's so great. Not till they're, like, 45, because he's 31, and he has, I, I just learned the amount of loans he has. You said, why don't you start a podcast? <laughs> I mean, so the earnest uh, partnership we have uh, has just become very close to home, and I actually will be needing earnest very soon, um, uh, because it helps reduce student debt. It does. It helps <laughs> refinance your loans into one little flexible payment. So if you're dumb and thought it'd be a good idea to date a specialized uh, vet who went to medical school for 10 years, I have news for you. You're going to need uh, earnest. We have to uh, roll it up a tiny bit. Sorry. She said, I have news for you. I have to you. read a little bit about what it is. I'm just talking about oh. my 
right, personal life. You can refinance your student loans with earnest. You can reduce your loan term. You can save money, combine multiple loans. Loans are a nightmare. They're confusing. So what did we learn here? We learned- Data human doctor. <laughs> Uh, go to Ernest. I'm going to be going to Ernest very soon so that this relationship uh, uh, doesn't get real sticky. Because Ernest will help you. It'll put everything in one place, make it super easy for you. And right now, Ernest is offering our listeners a $100 cash bonus. Ernest. Refinance your student loans debt. Refi nope. Ernest is offering our <laughs> listeners a $100 cash bonus. Refinance your student debt at Ernest.com slash Whitney. Terms and conditions apply. Now Ernest is giving our listeners a $100 bonus. Refinance your student loans at Ernest.com slash Whitney. Terms and conditions apply. Once again, you get a $100 <laughs> cash bonus when you visit Ernest.com slash Whitney to refinance your student loans. Not, Not available, available in, in all states. states. Terms and conditions apply. Visit Ernest.com slash Whitney for more details. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> Ernest student loan <laughs> refinancing. Benton, do terms and conditions apply? I'm just curious. They do. They Thanks. do. Visit Ernest.com slash Whitney for more details. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> Ernest student loan <laughs> refinancing made by Ernest Operations, LLC, NMLS, number 12049173, California Financing Law License, number 6054788, 302nd Street, Suite 401, North San Francisco, California, 9410. Visit Ernest.com slash... 9407. Do you want me to do it? I'm really good. No, at we it. just can't talk during the green, remember? You can't. I mean, Vis well, I'm just going to read from the here. Visit ernest.com slash licenses for a full list of licenses. <laughs> All right. If you guys know anything about me, you know that uh, when uh, men are around me, they get ED. <laughs> Let's be honest. My voice is not an aphrodisiac. Erectile dysfunction uh, is no stranger in my home. Uh, and it's frankly not fair to the lovers that I take. So I have to do something to cancel out my personality so men can get erections. So you give them medication. So I <laughs> Lobotomies weren't working, so we had to go to Roman for help. <laughs> and they are not allowed to murder me anymore, so we just have to make a deal. And, and Roman's great because Roman, get, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for your ED. All from the comfort and the privacy of your home. You can do everything from your home now. It's so you don't have to go you be embarrassed. Have you don't have to, to go anywhere. to Rite Aid and ask some stranger, hey, my dick doesn't work. Can I get a yeah, pill? You can go on the internet and tell a stranger that a <laughs> licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, they will ship it to you for free within two shipping days. It's appropriate, trust me. <laughs> get started. It's so simple. Just go to getroman.com slash Whitney and complete the online visit. And now we're going to read the details. Uh, Emily's going to read it because now we're, we're reading the important part of the ads. If we mess up, one of us has to eat, play jelly bean roulette. Emily, go. <clears throat> go to getroman.com slash Whitney now. You'll get first 50. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, oh, you did it on right. purpose because right. you wanted a bean. Okay, let's go, Emily. Get a bean. Have a, This is the jelly beans that could be delicious or could be awful. You took a blue one. That's cheating. <laughs> Sorry. What'd you get? Blueberry. Bitch! Well, okay, blue, I'll try blue now. Blue is... Both are good. One's toothpaste. Uh, get... Go away. Oh, I you are! You no, messed no, up! No, 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 you no. messed up! That doesn't you count. You messed up. I, it's on camera! That Stink was fuck. That was the fuck. first word. Yeah, of, and you messed it up. Stink fuck. I'm not doing... I'm not doing... You don't know because you don't know what colors they are. <laughs> Shit. Hold on. She just did a blue, a blue so No, like, she did a, a white one. Okay. Hold on. I'm so traumatized. Ooh, what color is it? Is it the brown one? Oh, God. Is it brown? Oh, I, the, I think I have COVID again. I can't taste anything. The chewing sound is... Is gross. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they're gonna get. Mad. Unless you like it. I can't. It doesn't taste like anything. What is it? What color? I don't know. Can we see the I just color? Taste, uh. Oh. Oh, it's either chocolate pudding or dog food. Oh. Well, I. I mean. Well, this ad. Go to getroman.com yeah. slash Whitney now. You'll get $15 <laughs> off your first month. It's really time to take care of your ED. And remember, get started today and you'll save $15 on your first order of ED treatment. It's dog food. Go get boners. Thank you. No, listen, listen. Like, if I was going to protest right now, I would be like, let's go. <laughs> I wouldn't be like, let's go to a costume shop. <laughs> I need a bearskin rug. I need, I need Viking horns. I need military paint. I need a pirate patch, like an All eye of patch. That shit. Fucking repellent cords. Fucking. I'm, I, I, I'm a little worried that was the was the outfit they were in though. You, no, they got dressed up for that. They got a whole. They got dressed up. But it was. I'm telling you, me as been being a black person and seeing how white people uh, look at black people or what they want to see. Yeah. It was so refreshing to see white people scale a building. <laughs> 
And I would say, I know this is so dark, right? I said to myself, this is what you think when you see crap. I was like, somebody's going to get shot. I knew somebody was going to get shot. I knew somebody was going to get shot. But the thing that made me feel so good, I knew the person that got shot wasn't going to be a black person. What a fucked up it's a fucked relief. Up thing. What a fucked up thing to have to feel, relief that around. Day, that day was so ugly. And what happened was so disgusting. And we're both from D.C. I mean, it was... It's, from the area. It's mm-hmm. so awful. It's like, to see what happened, and then, like, the woman who died. Right. To me, their cause was so ugly. It felt was was filled with so much anger. Mm. You don't want anybody to lose, <clears throat> lose their life. But it's a lot of people didn't give a fuck. Yeah. You know? It was a lot of people that was like, that's what you get. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate because anytime somebody loses their life, you want to have some empathy, you want to feel something, but a lot of people was just like dead and didn't really give a There's fuck. There's so much pain at this point and there's so much callousness that it's almost just like, we've gone numb. There's so much goddamn hate. Yeah. You know, and like, I tell people that like, uh, Barack Obama and Trump, they both were almost the same person. When I say that, they had rock star quality. Right. They had rock star quality. They had energy. They had personality. And it came along at a time when people were frustrated over a lot of things. People were frustrated with the Bush administration, so motherfuckers, even white people, was willing, and that's how he got elected, was willing to try anything else. And then there was an underlining group of people that supported Donald Trump that didn't have a voice. They were just waiting for their superhero to show up. And and I, and I tell people, both of those guys could have ran on each other's campaign slogan. When Obama was running, he could have ran off of "I'm I want to make America great again." Right. Uh, right Trump could have, right. if you think about it, and and while if Barack was ran off of "Make America Great Again," Trump could have came behind and ran off a of change. Ran off a of change. Mm-hmm. We don't want that, you know. But Interesting. They both, but they both had a quality. They appealed to people. They made people feel good. But one of them, the awful thing about it, it came from a place of hate. And what it did was it just let hate, it just let hate build, it let hate grow, it let hate manifest in places it wasn't supposed to. And I've said this before, whatever you think uh, Trump accomplished, whatever, it doesn't matter if the uh, he, he did good with the economy. And some of the things that people say he did, it was just hard to root for him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. for you, like, and I don't know if I said this before, but like in your situation, you're a small business, right? right. In my situation, I'm a small business and I'm a veteran. Yeah. So some of the things that he provided for those two people, I could possibly say, you know what? Uh, if he wins, uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. These are the things I can take. Uh, uh, appreciate. I, can, I can appreciate. Yeah. But the ugliness mm-hmm. is what made it so fucked up. Right, and it's and even with and, I, and I'm gonna be real with it. Even like everybody was like, you got your president with Barack Obama. People were happy. No, people weren't mad. People weren't mad at white people. Yeah. They wasn't like, fuck you. They wasn't dressing up. They was fucking happy that something that they waited for for so many years, yeah. something that could inspire and motivate them, happened. Hate's a drug. Self-righteous yeah. indignation's a drug. People are addicted to hate. It's 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 wild to watch because I don't think anyone wakes up in the morning. He's like, I want to be hateful and hate people. I think there are people are addicted to hate. It makes them feel important. It makes them feel meaningful. Like it's just why would you choose that? Some people, I, I I've been in relationships before, right? Mm. Right. We all have, and like, and found out some of them were toxic to the point like, you know, you have people that uh they're not happy. Yeah. Unless. They're mad. They're addicted because you... And when they're mad, that's a good fucking day for them. A, a di- uh, uh, adrenaline makes dopamine. The same shit you get from weed, from heroin, whatever. It is a drug. When people start fights and adrenaline, they're recreating their child. And then when I see people that hateful... Do dopamine, does that get anything in, anything with sex or anything? That, yes, absolutely. It's what you get when you have an orgasm. You get dopamine when you... What, what is that thing when you choke a motherfucker right before they about to bust one? Uh, the David Carradine uh, it's got a name now? Uh, <laughs> I can't say that word. Exfis- what is it? Uh, audio, aud- audio, auto erotic asphyxiation. And this is what I found through my years of mm-hmm. being experimental and things. Dating anybody, white women. White women. <laughs> anybody, like, you're just trying to kill no, no, them. Listen, listen. <laughs> anybody that can pronounce that likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody, and as a man, I think that a man should be able to choke a chick for three Mississippis. And if you're black, you should be able to do it with a noose. Do it with, oh, <laughs> no! 
God, it God, just it praying, only feels praying, fair. I pray. I wouldn't even talk about that. That's how reparations break. start. That's how it's going to start in the bedroom. We're going to get it. We're going to get it back. We're going to connect these coaches <laughs> one fucking <laughs> orgasm at a time. That's where we need to connect. With. No, I've never. The thing is that at least uh, the white guys I've dated with uh, audio, they they try to choke you, but they sort of don't go for it all the way. So then you have to act. You have to be like, oh, like, oh you got to make noise. You got to either do it or don't do it. Don't make me act. Do you have to like do like? <gasps> yeah, like, you can, he'll, they'll kind of do it soft, and you're like, oh, like what, what about? Does anybody ever like? So yeah. is it is it? It works better with a hand or like? What about it? Like a yeah, I, a but, whole. <laughs> What about a whole wrap around? From what the about back? this? Yeah. Like a like an arm bar? Yeah. Uh I I haven't had what that. What are the type of things that you communicate when you have a woman in this position? I'm gonna do my guess and what would you say? How would you communicate with her? Like yeah. we're like like If I had it like this, look at my face. Uh uh, you would just say, uh, buy my lotion on DanelleRawlings.com. No, you gotta say, shut the fuck up, bitch. Right? You gotta say shut the fuck up yeah. first. And then after you finish shutting the fuck up, then you buy the lotion. What would you but you know what I'm saying? What's you the got... craziest thing a girl has ever asked for in bed where you were like, no, I have a lot of guy friends that are like, they're asking me to hit her. She's asking me to choke her and I don't want to. Spit in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah, I've had that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is that? I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but. If you do, you better not miss. I got the spitting. You better not. <laughs> you better not miss. I, I, but when you in the mouth, think about it. When you like in the height. Yeah. And you're trying to get those dorphamines popping. Yep. Right? Dorphamines, I like that. Yeah. You 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 have a inner groove so good mm -hmm. that you say to yourself in the back of your mind, why isn't anybody filming this? <laughs> I'm a, I, <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, you like, oh, this is the day. Why are we recording this? We need to archive this because no. I don't know if I can reach it. You never had that? During sex? Yeah. Where you in your mind you was like this, fuck, I want to watch a playback of this. It's literally the only time I'm not being filmed. It's like the only time, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know. There are times where I've afterwards, I guess, taken photos or something to then send him later to try to keep him, to remind him, like, I did that thing. Don't forget I did that crazy thing you wanted me to do. If there's like a costume involved you or something. You said after, like, he's gone. Did you take a picture? I mean, like, if I've dressed up in a costume or done something. Wait a minute, you do that? Like, not like the QAnons at the Capitol. I'm not, I mean, I'm not I, buying I'm not raccoon saying, hats. I, I, I know you just, but I'm not saying, I know that you're in a relationship and everything. But um, there's a couple of posts you put on Instagram with different outfits, mm -hmm. and in a community, it's a phrase we use. Oh, she could get it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, like, I, <laughs> like but, she could get it. Thank, thank you. It was the same thing I, with I, 50 Cent connected with Chelsea Handler. It's like one episode. Oh, that bitch could get it. Thank you. I'm glad you're flattered by that. But I'm just saying, <laughs> no, you no, made some I, pictures. I was like, and then you say stuff like that. I was like, Shh. I knew there's a reason I got you back for a second time on the show. <laughs> no, you got me back. Uh, you got me back on the second time because I had so much fun and you were so awesome. You know what I'm saying? And then at the time that I came in, you know, and we still are de dealing with some of those troubles. Yeah. But I don't know. It was a very, very test testy time. And then we had to uh, maneuver around, you know, being responsible in things we said and being funny at the this same time. This was literally the week after George Floyd. Like, ten, we were just trying to have a really difficult conversation uncomfortable conversation and navigate it and it was so healing it was great I, I felt so good about it I know he probably had some reservations about it at first because he was like who am I to say this but yeah. like we talked about is that the only way you can uh, get change is you have to be able to create dialogue anybody got to be able to communicate with people without being angry and also that's like one of the great thing about podcasts you can have long three-hour conversations to talk about a subject that could never be discussed in eight minutes on a talk show right. i mean these are such complicated issues so did the black squares work is racism fixed yeah it's all over <laughs> good thank you i'm glad it's we all did over the it's all over they wrote a check thank right? you. <laughs> Black okay, people you like, got man, we want motherfucking justice. How much? Two trillion. All right, we're all good. Everybody, everybody go home. Those signs, we can take those down. We got it. So the yeah. Instagram worked. No, huh? it, it didn't change. But I will say, when we talked about it last time, I think uh, people have a different look on how black people feel. Mm -hmm. And even when we talked about it, we, we've we been through so many situations where police have wrongfully killed people and, and nothing really happened and you felt like black people the only people that were concerned about it. Mm -hmm. But I think the difference in this situation with George Floyd, it felt like the world was like, fuck it, enough is enough. Right. Unfortunately, we had to lose so many lives for people to even get to that point. But it was like, everybody was fed up. So hopefully, like moving forward, like 
you know, people could have a better understanding of how we feel and maybe adjust some of the things that they do. And let me ask you a question. And this is I have this is was a specific incident. I know, you know, a couple of people don't re represent all, but I was on. Are you ever going to try my lotion? I am going to try your lotion because my like you realize white women's faces go. I mean, they get real dry real fast. And right. I'm 38 years old. I, so this I know I, 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 I've moistened a lot of white faces. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, what's actually in this lotion? What is, is this? You raise it back. It's I really mean, good. this is, you know that I'm like a, a lotion whore. Oh, no, know well, when I'm, I'm telling you, then I'm about to pimp you. But can I put this on my face? I yes, also put you can put it on, on your face. face. Okay, good. Yeah, but try it on your hand. Just, a, a little goes a long way. I all right, so really don't go th crazy. Oh, that is real thick. Yeah, but, but that's why you only need a little bit. Ooh, what is smell? that? What is that? Coconut, black, pineapple? Black jungle fever. Oh, God, it that smells so good. Smells like uh, the my hookups in college. Woo! Did I ever tell you about? The okay, get out, get out, get out! They're coming back. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time? Did you used to do? Okay. Did I ever okay. tell you about the first time I dated a black guy? No. That um, I found uh, thong underwear in his bathroom, and I was freaking out and screaming. I found like sexy lingerie like in his bathroom, and I started screaming at him. And I was like, "Who's is this? Who's is this?" And he was like, "That's my do rag." <laughs> I was like, I'm so mad at you like, right now. I was like, I'm so it. mad at you. I was like, <laughs> that's no. hilarious. And then I did it again. I, I stand corrected. I accused him of cheating on me because I started snooping through his drawers. Um, Why do women do that? I, you, 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 Why look, do, do y'all stay okay, out of my okay. shit? Okay. Why do y'all have to flip your phone over when you put look it down? Look at my phone right why, now. Yeah. Well, why do you have to put nine passwords on your phone? Because you're trying to crack them. Yeah, but then why? Then just don't put them on there and I won't no, try to crack them. No, no, women. Yo, I dated just one girl once. Yo, she was so dope at cracking my password, right? So I good. changed my password and she, she, no, I was about to change it. And she told me the code that I was thinking about changing it to. <laughs> I was like, this relationship is over. Bitch. By the way, this is the most <laughs> this is the most moist cream I've ever had. Like I'm like slipping around. This is I'm telling you, this like, is the most moist cream I've ever had. And on my watch body. how long it lasts. Because my body sucks it up and right it away. It has CBD in it, so like Damn. if you got uh, inflammation or any of that type of shit, it just makes you feel good. The lotion makes get you that fucking sheen. feel good. That is like because my my I'm so. What? Can I get a little? Yes, dip? you do need a little on how the, the elbow. How the fuck I'm gonna give you lotion to ask for it back? Um, you get <laughs> so uh. Uh, and then the second time, uh, so it'd be a four, before and after. Go ahead. I accused him of uh, cheating. Why? Because okay, it had been four months. Oh, but you months, were young then. But he was also a professional athlete, and he had a lot of shit in his He's DMs. A, you, you, yo, basketball or football? I used to have a big basketball butt. basketball or football. Football. I used to have a big butt, don't know. Right. Uh, <laughs> young, th yeah. I mean, like, you know, I'm not like. It's not gonna be like, oh, get me crazy. I'm a medium, medium, medium butt. butt? Yeah, yeah, people, my friends, we never have issues going out. Yeah. Never. I'd be like, look at that girl with that flat ass over there. And look how flat go. my ass is after COVID. But that's still a good. But that's, look how flat it is. But it's, that's, a, that's what I call that's no. a bathing suit. It's no, not no, that. That is bad. You that's like a lot. Like I eat suit. granola now. That ass it's, is sufficient. It's just a line. Like I just have a legs and a. Yo, I back. can't do this. I can't it's do not, this. It's not. It's bad. I stalk lemon Lulu places, so don't do Lulu, this to lemon me. Lemon Lulu. <laughs> Lulu lemon or whatever. The okay, fuck so the then name I of. accused the guy, the same guy, of cheating on me. Cause yes, he had a lot of girls in his phone calling him. He's a professional athlete. We weren't fully together yet, and I was trying to figure out if we should be. So I just was like, look, I was looking for shower gel in the bathroom. Well, no, this was, I was like 33, maybe 34. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this was oh, like five years ago. So he was a professional, like... But, uh, football, uh, or... Okay. The ones that run backwards at the end, defensive end. The ones um, at the end. Okay, I was just going to say, just for anybody that's listening, <laughs> that most professional athletes get a lot of pussy. Yeah, no shit. They get a lot of pussy. And if you're going to... if you try, In some cases, they're faithful. It's going to be hard as shit to be an athlete to be rich, to be popular, and not fuck. And I was insecure also. But when, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, when you got them, like when they're in the league, here's a time if you really wanna get an athlete, you gotta get them like two years after retirement. Interesting when they got all the CTE and the injuries. They got the, but they don't got the road schedule. Yep. They've done everything. They also, they're, they're, they're also easy because they're so infantilized. Like if you just like come in and like know their ATM code and start getting them groceries, they're because they can't do anything for themselves either. Right. So you just have to show up and be responsible, and then they can't live without you. But <laughs> okay, here's my thing: with women doing investigations to crack codes and everything, mm -hmm. and they finally crack the code and they find some incriminating shit. You'll always find what you're looking for. Always, you always, always, always. Guess what? Almost never does the relationship end. Interesting. Never. And I, this is what I thought, and I dated this chick once, and I was like, and I wasn't, yo, this is all 
funny to say, I wasn't doing anything crazy, crazy, right? I only had two side bitches. <laughs> but I was wondering why I'm like, this chick is trying so hard to catch me doing something. Then come to find out she was doing the same shit. Always. So a lot of times it's like this. They want to they want to catch you. It's edible. Too. No, this is good lip balm too. It's everything. They want to catch you just so they can justify uh, the things you're doing. Then they're and then projecting. Comes, they're projecting their guilt onto you. And, and yeah. And another thing, my thoughts on cheating. For the most part, men uh, cheat for sport, mm. and women cheat for revenge. Oh wow. A lot of women don't have it in them to cheat, but if it's like I'm gonna get you back, mm -hmm. fellas, let me break it to you. Those girl trips, they're fucking. <clears throat> Those girl trips, when all you see is pictures of all the girls, they're fucking. I mean, they you got are, another month till the vaccine comes out. As soon as that vaccine's out, they're probably back to it. You got another yeah, month to where vaccine. they're not cheating on you. Are you doing a vaccine? Uh, hold on. I'm about to watch you drink soy milk. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> I just, Why you just, I just want doing? to protect my, okay, my shit on. here. Because I just this is expensive technology. Some chocolate soy mocha. It tastes good. Okay, it, right? It's kind of sweet. Soy milk is so sweet. So it's no sugar. It's a lot of sugar. Really? Mm-hmm. But it's just soy milk is naturally kind of sweet, and then the mocha. Chocolate? Yeah. Mocha? Uh-huh. So you don't think that that's a racist order? <laughs> the soy. I'm just saying, I, like, I, did you I, look, feel good when you was like, chocolate mocha? <laughs> that Take was... me back to fucking those days. <laughs> dude, no, I want to go through your phone, Donnell. Dude. Chocolate, no, this I was never, this was the straw that broke the camel's back of he. I went through his shit. I was going through his drawers, right? Because I was just gonna see. Because I was like, he's got another girlfriend. He's got something else going on. Sure enough, I find a, a a drawer with a pair of diamond earrings, and I'm like, whose are whose are these? Whose earrings are these? And he was like, those are mine. And I was like, oh right. What the fuck is wrong Black with you? Black guys wear diamond earrings. Yo, fuck. what the fuck is wrong and with I, you? What the fuck is... That's but, a fucking but, show right there. But then, trying to catch somebody being black. I'm going to catch you being black. Watch. And I was like, shit. And what is this? If this was takes a, the, a white dude, you would have been cheating. This would have been some other woman's jewelry. And then, then the thing that was the worst, I was like, okay, you have diamond earrings. Got it. Sorry, I got it now. And then Valentine's Day... I knew day, that, come, was a that was going to be <laughs> fucked up. You found diamond earrings in the drawer? I know. You're never going to find them in the drawer. I was like, this must be someone, some girls who left it here, right? right. And then Valentine's Day comes... And I'm like, oh, this is, I'm going to get some diamond earrings. He knows jewelers. I right. got little gold balls. Oh, I was like, no, you, so you get the diamond earrings and I get the gold balls. Um, I don't like this one this bit. And this relationship lasted how long? Uh, like five or six months. First date, first black, black guy you dated? No. Was it? No. I thought this is not the, I want no. the first story. The first story? Oh gosh, that's well, the all first a story blur. That, no, the first story. I'm, I'm curious <laughs> the first story. Going because off I know the rails. someone that, 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 that crossed the tracks or whatever, right? And and they were like, uh, they were like trying to get their girlfriends to do it. Like, it's like one starts it off, right? Oh no. And then they talk it up. And it's like, what did you do it? You do it? You do it? Because I think some, they're going to do it. It's too much curiosity. The first time, was it everything that they talked about? Oh, interesting. I don't know. I don't know, but um, that's a good question. I've heard a lot of epic fails. Really? Yeah, I've heard some like oh, it wasn't everything that you were talking about. Well, Megan. you know what the thing is that actually was the 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 part that was like it, well, it was actually wild because to see racism happen it, like in a way you're like oh fuck like because everyone's staring at you. Everyone. So you did you were so back then when you dated a black guy, you were a freedom fighter and it was a freedom fuck. Um, I didn't, I'm just I didn't, saying you was I like, didn't think of it that way. I was, you gave him some Peace Corps pussy. <laughs> I basically was. I basically went to Dancing with the Stars, and I was with Chelsea Handler, and he. Oh, would, and you don't have to say anything else. Let me tell you something about Best Fiends. Best Fiends when is I was my little, game. When I was little, I used to carry around a cape everywhere, a wizard cape. I was gonna be a wizard, but now Best Fiends, I, it's in my pocket at all times. <laughs> so look at this. Best Fiends is your replacement for dressing up as a wizard in public. Yes, look at my little team, and we, we're fighting slugs. Let me see. Hold on, but wait. It's so fun. You just get to like I have to connect these little strawberries, and then it makes my little scorpion shoot the slug. <laughs> it's so cute. I it's... love it, and then you can level them up. I'm literally obsessed with leveling them up because they change outfits. They look different as they grow. I know, but why am I? Why can't I get these raindrops going? I get stuck on the raindrops. Well, this is the very first level, so let's just. Because um, I had to redownload it. He's green, so you have to use green. Oh, cutie! He's, oh my God, he's, he's so leaves. Cute. But so look, when you touch this thing, the little guy smiles. It's so cute. I'm obsessed. Best fiends just puts me in such a good mood. It's like this puzzle game. It's like a mental puzzle game, but it's like, 
There's so many characters. There's so many different ways to win. It's really, I mean, I'm, Honestly, I'm like, I've been playing it since quarantine. I'm like obsessed with at it. At this point, I think it's the only time when I go into my phone, it's the only time I do something healthy for myself. <laughs> my phone now I associate with like negative texts, uh, bills, you know, bad news. And so like, you're like uh, online shopping and buying a bunch of stuff I don't need. Like this is my like healthy app on my phone that yeah, I go to. Yeah, it's a good way to just like check out, And not fun, hurt myself and not spend and, like, money. And like work your brain. Yes. Without being like on your phone doing nothing. Yes, yes, totally. And it, it just makes me feel like I'm giving yes. my brain exercise. A lot of my friends in Nashville play it too. And then we'll send each other screenshots of like who has more points, who's who's got more slugs. More slugs. Um, who's leveled up their little critters Well, I'm the past best. level one now, so I'm catching and up I'm with you. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> I'm catching you know, I'm up a, with you. I'm getting you are, back. You're getting there. Um, okay. It's free to download. It's Best Fiends. Um, you can match three. It's a casual mobile puzzle game. Yep. Very fun. Look you at it. <laughs> I'm just showing. I really can't put it down. Look I love how cute. it. Um, a hundred million downloads. A hundred million downloads. That's crazy. hundred million people download this. That's crazy. That's amazing. Um, and download Best Fiends free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. You had a practice on that one. That wasn't fair. What's well, two sentences? Lazy. Lazy for feeling blue. That's me when I'm in my Brooklyn and sheets. I, I'm lazy. The problem is I don't need more reasons to stay in bed all day. Well, Brooklyn and is not helping. <laughs> At all. Beautiful, high quality bedding and home essentials. They work directly with manufacturers to give you a fair price. No middlemen, no markups. I gotta be like, sheets have gotten so exorbitant, and I think it's they know that we're all home and bedridden and sick or something. They're jacking up prices. And their comforters, their comforters are but amazing. But not Brooklyn in. Their not comforters Brooklyn come in lightweight all season and ultra warm to suit mm -hmm. every type of sleeper. If you run cold, if you run hot, if you're just a regular person. Do you, or you like to turn yourself into a burrito like Benton? Yeah, I, I like to. I like to ice out the house and then roll up in a blanket. <laughs> you know what I like to do? Roll up in a blanket. We'll see. And then slide down the stairs. Oh. It's really fun. <laughs> you can do it with Brooklyn. So far. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I mean, be safe, guys. There's also They also offer a variety of materials, including an eco-friendly, recyclable down alternative. Mm -hmm. Love that. Love, love. There's a reason that Brooklyn has over 75,000 five-star reviews and counting. And also, by the way, I know that this isn't the copy, but we also use Brooklyn and towels. Oh, the towels are great. But they sent us some, and we I spilled so much stuff in the podcast studio when Paris Hilton was on that. Look, and it absorbed it all. Look at this. What about the loungewear? Have you and tried you, the loungewear? But no. So comfortable. Give it to me. Loungewear is my whole life. It's so comfortable. But look at this. I, I put so much makeup on this, and then it washes right out. This is the only towels that the makeup, yeah. uh, it doesn't look like i Super been, absorbent, like, doing really easy to clean. They're very soft. Treat yourself to the ultimate comfort with Brooklinen's Comforter Collection. Go to brooklinen.com and use promo code Whitney to get $25 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and enter promo code Whitney for $25 off with a minimum purchase of $100. That's brooklinen.com, promo code Whitney. Damn, I was trying to distract you the way we used to do it in basketball when people did three throws. I didn't play basketball, so I know how to I know how to ignore jock. How you like that? <laughs> uh, I'd probably have way less pregnancy scares if I did too. Cut. <laughs> well, you know, we were doing a summer camp, yeah. Chappelle show summer camp, and Chelsea came out, and then during the summer camp, I became the River Ninja. Yep. You know that you know that part, right? I do. I got in touch with nature. I started doing earthing and grounding getting in touch with my chakras. And earthing and grounding, that's when you're standing barefoot on the dirt and receiving the sort of electricity from the ground for your yeah. ions to be balanced. Yeah, that's earthing and that's grounding. Yeah. Then they have another thing that's a combination of earthing and grounding, it's called sun eating. Ooh. Right, and that's how I did a study on it, the the, the health benefits, and what what the, the combination of what you do is like, you get, you get in touch with the ground barefoot, right? Mm -hmm. Then you gotta walk somewhere where you can see the sun, right? right. And then you like, you're supposed to look at the sun, mm -hmm. not not when it's uh, like when it's f fully out. I feel like that's a perverted thing to say. When, not when you don't supposed to look at when it's fully out. Right. But like when it's coming up, and you add ten seconds every day. It's a it's a practice where after a, a certain period of time. Your eyes get used to it, right? And it, it can help you with your diet. It's so many things. Well, because it sets your clock, and also you get that vitamin D, which everyone's talking right. about, to, yeah, I got for that your vitamin immune system. D. But do you know that the <laughs> got that vitamin D? <laughs> but do you know that the the so the way to get the most uh, sun and vitamin D the fastest is through your butthole, and people are sunning their buttholes. And guess what? That's why black people have a vitamin D deficiency. <laughs> <laughs> That's one vitamin. Fuck that. 
Well, I'm not doing that. Look you they, you open your butt all up. Look at they Yo, open it. this they, is to the what, sun. Yo, first off, how did you even? What was the conversation <laughs> that it happened where? <laughs> Who said it? I know it was somebody like this. Oh, you really want to know how to get that vitamin D? <laughs> really through your butthole through for your real? Through your butthole. So if, you, if you're like, I need to be out in the sun for an hour today to get vitamin D or whatever, if you just put your butthole to the sun for like five minutes, because the skin is so thin, you get more, I believe, is the logic. I did that. The next question, my question for you is, how much vitamin D have you had lately? <laughs> In my butthole? In your butthole, anyway, anywhere, period. People, uh, 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 fully uh, uh, people, uh, the woman goes by <coughs> metaphysical. She's a big fan of what play, per, uh, perineum, perineum, is that how you pronounce it? Perineum sunning. 30 seconds of sunlight on your asshole per day is the equivalent of a full day of sunlight with your clothes on. The benefits, more energy, better sleep, uh, more creativity, more sexual energy. I don't know if your butthole is sunburned. How good can the sex be? And well, if, I, I, it's hard for me to even know when I'm sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, I did some dumb ass shit. I was like this, I said to myself, black people don't get sunburned. That's what I said, me and my friend, we were in Naples, Florida. One of my friends had a boat, we went on a boat, and we was like, cause when you go, like when you spend a lot of time in New York, wherever you go somewhere down south where it's sun, you want to come back with a tan. Yeah. You let people know I've been on vacation. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know anything <laughs> about um, FPSs or see what's that, the shit? SPF? Yeah, the, the number that regulates what type of uh, sunscreen you would have. Right, What's, like SPF or UV. Yeah, yeah, and it has like a number attached to it. Yeah, whatever. but a lot of those are fake. Apparently, now they go up to like 180. Apparently, it doesn't really go past 40. We didn't know 40. anything about it. Yeah. We grew up on baby oil. Yep, yep. <laughs> we had so, tin foil and baby oil, and we, we got did, the sun. We was like this. We coming back. I'm coming back with a new name. They're going to call me Chocolate Buddha <laughs> when I come back. I put that baby oil on. We was on that goddamn boat for like five hours, and I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, the next day, no, <laughs> dry. Yo, my my shit was tight. My neck was tight. I was a I was a cinnamon color. <laughs> I was like a brown and a red, and that shit was painful. I was. We didn't think it could happen. Yeah, you know, because you, you. So you, you know, just learned that. Yeah, I just learned it then. Yeah, but it was like it was it was an awful experience. But I love that you. Um, I feel like I watched it kind of happen with you when you were out, um, uh, at Dave's in nature. Like, do you feel like you've like reconnected, like or connected? I and feel like. Hollywood was alive for so many years. Mm. I feel like the energy and the vibe they cre create here is like you have to be here to yeah. make Hollywood. Yeah, you know, and for they, the most they part, they want you to be scared and it, need them. Yeah, for the most part, that was the case when I first started doing it. But because of podcasts, because of virtual this and virtual that, you realize that it doesn't have to be here. And like when I first went out there, it was at a time where. You know, it was stress in my relationship or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, I hadn't told jokes in a while. I really loved the community out in Yellow Springs, Dave Chappelle and the whole crew. And I just needed to fucking get away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just get away. Not run away, but just get away. Mm -hmm. Then when I went out there, I started realizing how simple life could be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when I used to be like, not that I'm a fashion person like that. When I used to be like, oh, I need these new shoes, new shoes. Out there, I was like this. I just need a pair of fucking Tevas. That's it. I just need a pair of Tevas. Tevas. I went from Adidas to Tevas. I went from the streets <laughs> to the creeks. I went from the hoods to the woods. I went from oars to whores. Yo, Whitney, I became dun, 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 <laughs> River Ninja. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't mad at it. Yeah. It was simple shit like finding peace in a river. Yeah. It was just like. You don't need this. Like where, you know, Hollywood motherfucker, you think you need 34 belts and shit. No. When you're in the fucking Midwest and you fuck with them rivers, you need one fucking belt. Yeah. And one of them ones with the little loops on it. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It could be used for anything. You could pull a tractor out of mm -hmm. a ditch if you need. Mm -hmm. It could hold your pants up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you could pull it, whatever. That's, I was finding out that the it's simplicity. simple shit. I never thought that I would be excited about seeing the Marshalls. Dude, Marshalls is the shit, what? I'm, I'm telling you, dude, I Marshalls like, has it all. TJ Maxx is, is. Do you remember Filene's basement? I remember that. Dude, that was that was my shit. But, but the reason why I never thought I'd be excited about it because when I was growing up, this is where I grew up. Going to Marshalls, going to TJ Maxx, those places, it represented you didn't have enough yep. money to go to other places. That's right. So once you get some money, we're like, I can go to other places. You forget that uh, in Marshalls, everything is 19.99. Yeah. They got one price for any Every, fucking thing you no, want true. in there. Do rag, nineteen ninety nine. Diamond earrings, nineteen ninety nine. Butthole plugs, nineteen ninety nine. They might be in the DVD bin, yeah. but they're nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, they're gonna be right now. <laughs> but it just felt like it, it just it felt like such a connection, and I remember. Uh, 
the day when I really felt like I was gonna become the River Ninja. I was dry, I was I was a mad um on the Mad River. Shout out to my dude Ted the Greek, Ted Greek, whatever the fuck it is. Um, I was in the Mad River, and one of my friends, been known for a year, Patrick, we're both in different kayaks, right? I'm in one, he's in one. And we smoking a joint, right? Mm. And then we just, it was just, you could just hear, like, birds, water, and it was just so peaceful, and we were just chilling. And then he said, he said, Donnell, this is what life is all about. Yep. He said, this reminds me of uh, uh, building bike ramps in the backyard and going crawdad fishing with my dad. Mm. I was like, well, you won on this one because I didn't do none of that shit with my dad. But I felt what he was saying about the simple things of life. And and, and, and in that moment, some it just made me think of the things, the memories that my dad didn't create with me and that how bad I wanted to share those experiences with my son mm-hmm. and how simple it is. You know what I'm saying? We so caught up on like kids, kids, oh, they're hooked to their computers, they're hooked to their phones. A lot of that is because, um, that's the easiest option to give them. Mm-hmm. You know, my son, Are you fishing with them? Are you taking them to hike? And people complain and they don't give them another option. They don't give them another option. And then my son, like, he's on, he's just like any other kid, like the YouTube videos or whatever. But when I take him out, and when, when he finally came out, when I took him out of nature, it wasn't about that phone. It was about skipping rocks. Because it's also, you know? my thing is, my phone's super addictive and compelling until I go into nature and I don't have a desire to even look you at it. You don't want to do it. You know? I mean, you, wanted, you don't want to look at it, but you know, you, for some reason, we are a society that we feel like we feel like we have to capture every moment. Well, we don't want to. Yeah. You, we don't want to tell a story. Mm-mm. We don't want to be like you know when we were coming up. Uh, and I'm some dif- distant from your age, but it was like this: you had to see the story, and you had to have the person who knew how to share the story. That's right. And that's the only way. And when you saw them, Whitney, you was like this: Yo, you know everybody. You remember that time we were at the backyard? And there was no. Let me just show you. Let me just show you. Yeah. You had to tell an amazing fucking story. Uh, you know, you didn't just get to go, here's the video. Right. And you had, and then as, as that story grew over the years, um, it always changes. Mm, always, it always. always you embellish. <laughs> when you hear that story, you're like, wait a second, you were in Jamaica? I thought you were in Van Nuys. No, no, it's different. <laughs> and then you have to get more, especially for my community. <laughs> yeah. Like, when we tell a story, it's very animated. Like, if I, like, if I tell you a story, like, you could be like, you, you would tell a story, you'd be like, down there, I was walking down the street, <laughs> you know, and a guy pulls me over and I got upset. I couldn't say it like that. I was like, Whit- Whitney, I'm walking down the street. You know what I'm saying? I'm walking. You got you to be like this. How was you walking? Okay, let's do it. You got to keep asking me what you okay, Then what happened? What Yo, so I'm walking down the street, right? Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Which, okay. Uh, were you roller skating? No, nah, I wasn't roller skating. I was oh. just walking. I, it's been times where I rolled. Oh, got on, it. Okay. Right? But it wasn't that that day. I'm okay. just regular old walking, okay. right? Okay. Okay. Then, like, when you change the direction, I'm walking, then, then boom. The boom, what happened? Who? You saw someone? No, boom is not a gun. Yeah, I saw, I, oh. boom, I saw him, boom. Yeah. I'm like, come over here. So then I stroll, stroll is walking too. Okay. Then I stroll over and I say, what's up? I give him a high five. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to act, <laughs> yes, this, act yes. the whole story out. Yeah, there was no, we, we, you were, I mean, when you were, we were telling stories and shit before social media, you had to be, uh, Entertaining. Right. People stop learning to be entertaining anymore. People. It's easy here. Look at my phone. Look and by the phone. way, I've I've taught like in some of these YouTube stars. When you talk to them, you're like, oh, you've only been doing this for a screen. <laughs> like you don't know how to do it to people. Yeah, they don't know how to be. You know, you don't know regular. how to keep people's attention necessarily right. in a live situation. And that's the only thing. The only issue I have with the social guys that claim to be comedians, whatever. Let's just be good at both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, the fact that you have a platform where you can. It doesn't matter what anybody say about the social media comedians or whatever. Um, these people like they, like they they're self made. Mm-hmm. They're doing. They're, they're self-made. adapting. They're adapting to it. That's what we would be doing if we were twenty five. We would do the same thing, and the you know. No no matter what you think of, like how they get their path to success, they got there, mm-hmm. you know, and they, and they got there on their own will. Mm-hmm. You know, like with those videos and those guys that do this shit every day, this shit is draining. You know how hard it is to be consistent with that it's shit. It's exhausting. It's exhausting, but they Dude, know what to pay off. Upload. Is. They know how to use Dropbox. I have all the respect in the fucking world for you. You know. Yeah. But they're also, I think, teaching us like these social media comedians. They're teaching us and showing us like. You know, you guys don't have to do it the old way, you fucking old fuck. You don't have to go do 50 cities and then shoot an hour. Like, you can yeah, do Yeah, but little- the oldest people are so, they want to be so angry because they see the success these people are doing with, with less time yeah. instead of embracing it. You know but what I mean? They're Everything- showing us, like, you can do a little five-minute clip. I was watching your shit this morning, the Oprah thing, and would you have done this had social, you had not seen, like, oh, other, you can do this. 
Yeah. This is Donnell doing an interview with Oprah. Prince of Ashiness Donnell Rawlings. Very In this on-air excerpt, the Duchess of Ashiness talks publicly for the very first... Uh-oh, hold on. ...time about his father and when, his half-sister. When did you do this? How fast did Yesterday. it take to turn this around? Yo. He found out his dad was working really? with the town. It took us... Did it feel like betrayal when you found out your father was working with the tabloid? Betrayal? What you think? What kind of question is that? Do I think it was betrayal? You goddamn right it was betrayal. It was betrayal, Sherelle, Michelle. Michelle, and betrayal. This bitch just asked me, do I think it was motherfucking betrayal? Bitch, what do you think it was? He said, no, absolutely not. He hadn't been talking to them, so he basically lied to you. Yeah, he lied to me. He lied. That basically, the motherfucker lied. What you trying to figure out? Betrayal? Sick every time I fucking talk to you, fucking making the nigga cry. Huh? Yes, he lied to me, Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Ask me something else. Ask so, me something else. Your father being hunted down, it seemed like you were saying in some ways that they did this to him. So I want you to be able to clarify this, that the that the tabloids, the media did this to him. They hunted him. Mm. But he has a responsibility in it, too. Mm. His responsibility is to give his motherfucking kids. Yes, the tabloids was hunting him. So was my mother was hunting him. The, the weed nigga was hunting him. The laundry nigga was hunting him. Everybody was hunting him because he wasn't shit. Does that answer your question? He was being hunted by everybody. Police and Dinner his side, bitches. Your half sister on your father's side has written a a supposedly tell all book about you. Part, what is yeah. what is your relationship with her? I don't fuck with the bitch. How about that? Go run and tell that. Tell our book. I don't fuck with the bitch. Half sister, quarter sister. I don't give a fuck. I don't fuck with the bitch. And she can get her money if she want. I get my money. She you writing books? You write books? I'm selling lotion, bitch. I'm selling motherfucking lotion. The whole family can get paid. I just don't appreciate all the shit. So you all weren't close? You didn't grow up together? Yeah, we grew up together, but I didn't fuck with the bitch. She doesn't really know you. I see her like holidays and stuff like that, but I ain't fuck with the bitch. I didn't, I mean, she was cool, she was my sister, but I didn't really fuck with her like that. And she was always a grimy ass bitch. She was grimy. And I used to spend time in the palace. I used, we used to be up in there and it was good. It was good, the relationship we had. Now they wanna just, <laughs> see that's that white people shit. Now I'm nobody. Just because I'm ashy. So were you thinking of harming yourself? Were you having suicidal thoughts? Bitch. No, I wasn't suicidal. I was ashy. Okay? Bitch, you know what ashy is. Take your shirt off right now. I mean, telling Oprah to take your shirt take off. Take your pants off right now. <laughs> Let me see the motherfucking ankles, Oprah. <laughs> Do you know how that feels? I'm telling you, people can associate ash with black. And I'm telling you, I'm 100% sure the reason they kicked me out and don't want to have anything to do with me is because I'm ashy. First of all, where are you? You got the, wait, 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 wait. Why wait, wait. are there so many burns what? in the oh, background? Yeah. Oh. I was ashy. What? Is you hard of hearing? What? What? Are you hard of hearing? What? <laughs> is, did you hear me? Yes. And you're not going to tell me who had the conversation? No, I'm not telling you shit. Go ask Gail, bitch. Y'all talk a lot. Fuck you asking me a question when Gail got all the goddamn answers to the questions. Can you can you tell us what the question was? I'm not saying shit. Go ask your BFF. I'm not saying shit. Dude, where are these birds? We just added it where in there. Where are they? Oh my just, we just where added it are you on the river? <laughs> in, no. in with the Chappelle? The where funny, the funny thing about that? Is oh, every fuck. so often it's up now on Donnell's Instagram, you guys. This is so fucking funny. But the thing about it was like, <sighs> you know, 
you know, I came from a sketch background. And people are always like, when are you going to do more sketches? But it's kind of, I don't think sketch. Yeah. But every so often, shout out to my, the guy that helped me put that together. Uh, dude, Samson. it's, it's all, 10 minutes, beautifully edited, perfectly, like you turned around that in 24 hours. It was really less than 24 hours. Like, we already know, like, if there's ever, like, a really dope news story, like, how can we... Comment it on it, yeah. And it's like, and it's so funny because my guy Samson, it's like we've been trying to put a project together. You know how sometimes you force stuff, it doesn't happen? Yep. And then my the light life. bulb, the light bulb went off with him. And then when it went off with him, with him, it went with me. But this is the dope shit, like, I really appreciate about his efforts. It's like normally we go there, we try to do everything one time. He laid everything out. He had the everything. The editor. He, put, yeah, he had everything keyed out. Yeah. And then this is when I knew he was serious because you know how you put a sketch like that? You want a certain voice to, to voice it. Yeah. But you put another voice in there just for placement. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So you can. Yes, yes, yes. Like placement. But it looked like, like from the time that he thought about the idea, I think I was at his place maybe an hour after that, maybe two hours after that. And the the, the 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 shit that I had to record, I did that in like 20 minutes. He was editing, and probably like an hour after that, it was ready to rock. If this was a, sh I mean, back at when we used to make television, they, like a sketch would take 200 people between the crew, the right. lawyers, the writers, the you know the that means a lot of people might be out of jobs in some ways as the, this business changes. But this is two people takes twenty four hours. This is how it should be for something like this. And you it's, know, and it's and it's content, but that that's no notes, no executives telling you you can't say that. You but can't. But that's what it is. No now, fear. It, no don't don't come for Oprah. No fear. That's what I was like when I was I was looking at it and I was like, oh, I called Oprah bitch four times. I was like, okay. Snoop did it she once. She would have thought Snoop it was hilarious. It yeah, of course. Yo, Gail would have. Well, I don't think. Maybe Gail. not Gail. Gail, yo, Gail maybe Gail not. Would, yo, Gail's, Gail, 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 Gail might be in the comments. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna tell you why. Funny story about Gail. So, first time I met, her, I was doing some shows with Chappelle in New York, right? And uh, she saw my show. We were at this place where we were getting a little little uh, appetizers and stuff. And she came, sat beside me, right? And we, she was like, "Hey, Donnell, you're so funny. You're so funny." And I'm like, and I'm saying to myself, "Oh shit, man." That's Oprah friend. You know, you take her name away from me. Oprah is so huge, but you yeah. know somebody. That's Oprah friend. And then I had my phone. Uh -oh. I had my phone right here. Uh -oh. And she was like, I got to get your number. I said, okay, I put my phone on. And she tried to look at my phone. I said, I said, I said, don't look at my phone. You, you, and then I'm, I'm talking to her. I said, you, you ain't ready for what's in my phone. She said, what's in your phone? <laughs> <laughs> she engaged that shit. She said, what's in your phone? I said, don't worry about it. Then she said, are you on Instagram? I said, that's kind of an insulting question for me to be in the field of having to ask my Instagram. She said, okay, give me your Instagram. I gave her my Instagram. And she got her glasses right here, right? And she's looking. She got her glasses like this, right? And she's looking, like scanning through stuff. And I had did this video. Michelle K had this video called, You Can't, um, you can't um, Raise a Man. Right, mm -hmm. and I Pulling thought that was very insulting, especially for me being a man. I was like, it was like my. I, I said, I need to do an answer to it. So I did a song that said, "You can't save a bitch. <laughs> if you can't raise a man, you can't save a bitch." Right, and I dressed up like this preacher. He had Tim's and shit on and everything, <laughs> and I had just posted it on my page. So she was looking. She was like, "What is this?" And this is when I started the organization SaveABitch.com. Right, okay. And the reason why, it might not be there anymore, but the reason You forgot why, to pay your GoDaddy yeah, on that one? Yeah, that's probably what it was. Your, your Squarespace I had uh, lapsed. I let it go out and do anything with it. So it was, um, she was like, she was like, what's the name of the organization? This is what it goes to, by the way. <laughs> oh, shit. Is that it? No, no, somebody probably snatched it. It was years ago. Oh, shit. So she was like, what is, I was like, I got to, um, I said, this is what I broke down to. I said, listen. I, I'm, I'm an activist, I got this organization, and I said, this is what I said. I said, I think all women at a certain age, right, at a certain age, they have two things on a scale, temptation and salvation. Okay. And depending on who comes in your life, it could tip the scale either to temptation or salvation. Interesting. I said, so I started this organization to save and help in that area. Right, she said, oh, Donnell. She was like, she said, Donnell, that's such a wonderful idea. And she was like, what's the name of the organization? And I said, okay, before you get upset or anything, just understand that this is for women so and so. And she said, what's the name of it? And I said, saveabitch.com. She did like this. She said, oh, no. 
She said, I said, I'm saying to myself, I'm never. Oh, no. I was like this, I'm never going to meet Oprah. I'm like, it's over. <laughs> it's over. I can't get in, I can't get with Stedman. I'm like, if Oprah knows I use bitch in the sentence, I'm never going to get to the bitch. Right? <laughs> Listen. So I said. <laughs> you calling her bitch probably isn't helping me either, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she was like, she said, oh, no. And it looked like her face said, oh, no. Oprah and I are going to talk about this, right? She was like, oh, no. But she didn't understand. And she was like. She didn't let me get to the part where I explained why. I said, because when you're trying to start something, my intent was very clear. Right. What I, I did, I, how are we going to do that? I said, by letting them uh, explain to women that, you know, be secure with yourself. You know, I, I really had a plan for it, but I needed people to get connected with it. And right. I was like, I could have been like, You wanted save it to a be queen. on Oprah's favorite things. Right. I was like, I could have been like, save a queen. Nobody be like, man, nobody want that shit. Nope. But like, I was like, if I call it save a bitch, people are like, oh, who was a bitch? But then once I pull you in, then it changed. And my mother, I even asked my mother about it. And I told her what the organization was, and I hit her with the name of it. And? And my mother always trying to look for different, um, she was like, she, she talked to a girlfriend. Maybe she was like, rescue a bitch. No, 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 no. She said, let's change the acronym, and let's change the definition of it. Let's make it an acronym and call it bitch being in total control of herself. Ooh. So I said, Listen, over bitch, listen, are you in control of yourself? But that was weird. And I thought that me and uh, uh, Gail would never see eye to eye on anything else. But because she's a close friend of Chappelle, she was always been a Vince and we, we sit back and we laugh at it. But she didn't play. <laughs> she didn't play. We got we to gotta get this uh, this uh, lotion on Oprah's favorite things. You know what? And I want to get into, I want to get into that daytime space. You'd be incredible at it. I need a link. Like, yeah. I want to get into it so much that I reached out to Ricky Lake the other day. Okay. I love Ricky I Lake. I love Ricky Lake. I, and I grew up on Ricky Lake. You know how she has said, said so much trauma in her personal life? I know. It, I like, did. I used to do the show years ago when it was, when you remember when a lot of shows were going to, like, we want a panel of different people with yeah. different perspectives. Right, right, right. And everything. And I was it part was of It was kind of the first podcast in a way. Yeah. You it know, was she was having on, you know, regular people to talk about their drama. People don't know. It's so funny about this industry. People want you to be hot your entire career. That's right. But people don't understand. It's like, it, like with Ricky, you know this, Whitney. You got, we well, could be in this shit for like 20 years mm -hmm. or whatever, right? And it could be like two or three years where you just kill them. Yep. Two or three years where you're in the most demand, mm -hmm. your tour dates are there, whatever. You might not be able to maintain that forever, but you got those three years where you can get it popping. Ricky Lake had about nine or ten of them. And then sometimes you got to go away and and grow. And 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 sometimes you got to not do the same shit. Sometimes you're like, I've had it. I want to do something else. I'm no longer interested in this. A lot of times when you go away, people are like, where have you been? What happened? You're like... Well, I tried to have a personal life because in order for art to imitate life, you have to have a life. So I can't have good jokes unless I go on dates and, and have a life. Yeah. And that's how it was. Like, that's how it was. Even to this point right now, the other day I said to myself, and I thought I'd never say this. And I wouldn't, I thought I'd never say this because all the money I ever made, it was dependent on doing road gigs, right? I thought I'd never say this, Winnie, that, you know what? I'm not upset that I'm not doing a lot of comedy right now. Yeah. And the reason why I'm not, because the pandemic forced me to pivot. Yep. And I realized, I said, okay, oh you got down there, you got to look at life as if, suppose you never do a live show again. Mm -hmm. What the fuck are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And as much people make fun of me with uh, some of the products or whatever I'm trying to do, but I was like. Everyone makes fun of everyone. Yeah, they do. And they say, whatever, he hawking and shit, whatever. But I was saying, you know what? Yeah, yes, we are. Yes. I am. We I said, all are. I said, but I know. I had to make a pivot because I didn't want to have to rely on just touring to make mm -hmm. money. And one reason I wanted to do that, because I'm an older guy with a young son. I want to spend more time with my son. I don't want to have to be out every weekend. Yeah. So when I first started, I first started with the candles. And you had the candles. The, candles. the black ash candle was someone, not only we ordered more, someone took them. Uh, uh, who was it that took it? Someone like literally was like, I'm taking this with right. me. one of our guests. I'll try it. We just had one, but we'll get more. But my the one point with is, the whale cum in it. My, my point, um, oh, fuck it. What um, is the whale? Uh, goddamn fucking. What? I forgot. We had, what was that shit? The black um, ash. Um, am ambergris. Ambergris. It sounds like a chick I dated, but you it's know. It's in, it's in. The, it, <laughs> it sounds like an off of coffee or the Starbucks. Ambergris. <laughs> Double latte, uh, ambergris. It's in the black ash candle. It smells. But the, the point I was making was, so I started with the candle shit because I was like, okay, Donnell, what are you gonna do? Because you know when it and first. And you can, did that candle did well, right? It did. The candle did well, and it's like the, the, the most exciting thing about it for me was like um, when because uh, I have a Shopify app. 
You know? Oh, nice. So, like, when you hear the ding, you know it's a sale. I felt like an OnlyFans whore. <laughs> ding, 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 I was like, oh, ding, shit, ding, ding, give me that motherfucking candle. <laughs> and then I started, I started pushing Good. it. I started pushing it. And then, you know, Rogan, Rogan is the king guy. Yep. You know, it's called the Rogan bump. And yep. thank you again for letting me talk about my candle last time because I had a lot of sales because of that. White women love candles. I know they do. And guess what else white women love? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, <gasps> you have River Ninja coffee now? Holy no, shit, I'm just this saying. is gonna go so well with my oat milk. Yo, I'm saying. And my you, coconut sugar. I'm telling you, the streets I are on fire. I love you, uh, come on. But yeah. also, here's the thing. You know that the blue collar comedy guys, you know them. Yeah, I, I, I was, was working with, in Austin, we were doing a residency, uh, Ron White. Uh, Ron White is, oh, fucking love that guy so much. They're the nicest <laughs> guys in the world. Nothing bad to say about any of them. But I remember reading that um, Larry the Cable Guy was making $380,000 uh, uh, $380, a month on beef jerky alone. Merch. He would just put his name on it. They were in gas stations. Like When I tell you River Ninja, River Ninja, River Ninja, River Ninja, Ninja is like, and I'm going to tell you another thing that got me excited. I'm going to fucking build that brand to it's like the Paul Newman of Starbucks, whatever. Starbucks, please. Huh? What? River Ninja, replace Starbucks. We could do it. Well, I, I, I would call it Starfucks. Yep. <laughs> and all the coffee is black. <laughs> and you Eddie want, Murphy could be an investor and call yeah, it Falling Starfucks as a that, call back to that SNL uh, drama. You want the dark roast or what? I, uh, I'm just saying I'm going to smell it because I love to smell coffee. Yes. But it's also like, why the fuck not? Like, I had shame about selling merch and stuff. I was like, oh, God, do people think I'm corny? I'm like, you know what? I felt the same if thing. If you think I'm corny, fine. Fine. But here's the thing, though, Whitney, with that said, and I I dealt with that, but I was like, you can't be corny if you're selling somebody a quality product. And you know what? The people that think you're corny are probably uh, p the people that aren't going to buy shit anyway. Don't and want them. Aren't, yeah, exactly. They're like comics that are jealous because they wish they could do it. You exactly. know what I'm saying? But it was it, it just like, I was in uh, Target the <laughs> other day. I was in Target the other day, and then... uh I went through, I was in the salad dressing aisle. I saw Paul Newman face on everything. And then I went to like the pets uh, aisle because I have a, a pup and fucking Paul Newman dog treats. I was like, well, yep. why, 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 why can't I do that? If I can, like, if I continue to give people quality stuff, like even with the lotion, it was for years. I've people... never been more moist in my life. Oh shit, with that this. can all change. That's right. Give I'm me the cell phone. That can all change. Never been that moist in your life. Look at this. And this is fancy Trying shit. Trying to get that wop. By the way, this <laughs> everything is wet except my pussy right now. I do need to get this. But uh, aqua. I love that this is. It's uh, aqua in parentheses. Purified water. <laughs> you get this is fancy. You know yeah, it is. This is what I'm saying. For years, people were like you need to get a lotion. You was Ashley. Larry. I was like, I didn't want to do it for the. I know I could get a sale off the novelty of it, mm -hmm. but I wanted something like you, you didn't want to cheat. Time, you didn't want to cheat. And people are coming back. Everybody that has used that fucking love this shit. I yeah. mean, they 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 they, they live they live. And I actually think comedians are the people you should trust the most because we're the ones that are the most critical of other yeah. people's corny shit. You know, exactly. or like I mean, when we go through the merch shop, I'm like, we can't put this out. Like, it's not good enough yet. It's not like I don't want to, you know, get killed on this. When I see other people's shitty merch, I'm like, why are you selling this to people? They're gonna buy it and you're selling them garbage. Yeah, but you know? that's what the people are thoughtful like, about it. Yeah, because you want to probably because you your brand comes in, people respecting and you have to have integrity. And like all of the products that I put out, it's like I'm like, oh I could look at oh I can get a quick dollar. That's true, but I still I want people to come back. You know what I mean? But I want also, people to enjoy. What's wrong with that? What's also also what's wrong with that? Well, what? What's, and it's also not a quick dollar. You put a ton of time and energy into this. No, I'm just saying like I could have I could have done this with not as much very good ingredients. Mm -hmm. I could have done this with cheaper labor. I could have did yeah. a cheaper route, but I was like, let me try to make it as premium as possible. Then people respect it. But all of this, all of these things, these ideas was born out of my escape from Hollywood, mm -hmm. going into Yellow Springs, having that experience and just getting those fucking energies. And I'm telling you that this summer was one of the, and I've all, sometimes I feel bad by saying it, but when like a lot of people this summer wasn't good yeah. but i'm telling you it was one of the financially it wasn't mm -hmm. but in terms of like i said to myself suck the year up plant seeds for next year yeah so i'm starting to see that shit it was good it was good for my mental it was good for everything and even with us and i know people have heard the stories of because i've been rocking with dave yellow springs no people heard the stories of austin mm -hmm. with us creating a bubble yeah and then the bubble being breached. Yeah. You know? It happens. And I think that you've had a similar situation. But I had COVID. I got it hard as shit. Yeah, but you know, one thing, 
okay, it's one thing to have COVID, mm -hmm. right? And the people, a lot of times people don't know how they got it. Yeah. But in some cases, people get it trying mm -hmm. everything to have a normal life right. and get back. As I say, get it as, honestly. Get get it honestly. Because I've seen, I seen you like, you making your pivot from like, what the fuck I'm going to do? I'm going to stand up, do shows, mm -hmm. to doing the shows here, mm -hmm. to like feeling comfortable with the fact that I have the resources mm -hmm. to be able to test people, mm -hmm. you know their status. And you did something similar to what Chappelle did mm -hmm. the whole summer up into a month ago. Like, how can I be as normal as possible yeah. and get my life. Because with the physical drawbacks and things that can happen to you with um, in a pandemic, the mental could be crazy too. Dude, the suicide rates are up, like loneliness they're now showing could actually be worse for you than COVID. You know, I don't, I'm not a scientist, like, but you know, I think there were a lot of comedians, like to me, I felt, you know, the obligation after I saw what Chappelle was doing to be like, I have space, I can do this, like I can Let's do try. It. Dave said it on that last that 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 special uh the last thing he put on yeah. specials commentary, yeah. serious points, a little joke. He yeah. said he was like and he was like, People love to see a hero fall. Yep. They rejoice. Yep. And he was like, because I watched him tape this four times. The last, was, the last piece he the put The last up. piece was like, the last piece was part of um, what he started about Don't Watch Chappelle Show yeah. until they pay me my money. Mm -hmm. when, when I tell you that whole thing was how that transpired, mm -hmm. because I remember one day, this one of my closest friends, right? And I saw three looks in his eyes. And I saw the look in his face. I don't know what he said. I'm about to stick these motherfuckers up. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know, it's a good thing to say for a black guy I'm sticking. He said, he mm. said, they're going to give it to me or I'm going to take it. Wow. Didn't understand what he was saying. Didn't understand what it meant until I was backstage when he made the, he, he did the first video. When he did the first video, he explained what was going on. And there were some people, like these people, there were some people backstage that were nervous. Those are people that have to depend on people yeah. accepting them or whatever. And they were like this. They was, this is a black man. And they were like, I think uh, he might be taking the black stuff a little too far. <laughs> and I said to myself, nope. I said, this is something that's been on his mind forever. And when that's the case, everything he's saying is coming out, it's coming from a true place, whatever. He said that, dropped the mic. By the way, this, take it too far. Huh? <laughs> he, he should take it too far. Yeah, but some people <laughs> don't want the beef. Yeah. They don't want the, the, like, the pushback. So when he made that announcement, mm -hmm. and everybody's like, okay, I wonder what's going to happen. I, I wonder what's going to happen. And then he did the, the next one when uh, he, he did one talk, talk about, how he got how he got the money, but I was with him. And by the way, at the same time, I, I don't know if this is a tantamount thing, but Taylor Swift was taking back her catalog of music, and she was like a hero. Yeah, because both of those folks did some shit that nobody ever does. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you know what it is. You sign a contract, that's it. They own and you. And people were saying like, you should, whatever, you sign a contract. But like he said. I didn't know I, what I was signing. I signed I it as a 28 year old kid. That's first thing you put Who some. Who had a debt and no, you know, yep. uh, money, no health insurance. What choice did I have? Then when he said, um, and I was I was with him, he, 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 he planted the seed, and I was with him when the call came in. when, And we were just hanging out. And he was on the phone and he said, Got him. And I was trying to read his lip on how much, all right? It was a nice jump, but got him. And he felt vindicated, not just for the money, but the efforts and how dare you do this. Because mm. in this business, you could choose to do the right or the wrong thing. Yep. And so often people choose. That's why you I, can I, get away with the wrong thing for so long. So many people support you doing the wrong thing why, for so that's long. That's why I respect this, the new younger CEO of Viacom. Because he had a situation with Dave, he had a situation with Nick Cannon. Hopefully mm -hmm. they could write that situation. But it's like, you can turn back the hands of time. You can say, you know what, that was fucked up. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You can't go, I'm older now, and now that I look back, you know, I... And you can do it too, because you can mm -hmm. afford to, because a motherfucker has made so much money for so many motherfucking people. And given so many jobs. Yep. And, and then, at what point do we stop saying, I should be so lucky to get fucked over by you? That's exactly. how we treated it for the longest time. Yep. And that's the whole thing about 
when I say to a certain extent, Hollywood is, was alive for so long. We also didn't know what we were worth. That's the other thing is that is that the amount of money they were paying us. We're like, this is so much money because we a lot of us don't come from money. A lot of us don't. Know we don't have the it. we don't have the confidence. Yeah. To be able to, to like challenge. dangle you, you like I'm going to get it. That's what happens so much with people in music. And everything is like the first thing, your first hit is like I made it. But what he's mm -hmm. taught people, and a lot of people taught, the toughest thing is to know your value. Mm -hmm. The toughest thing is to know your value and want the respect because they're going to try to devalue you all the time. But the thing is, <clears throat> this is the beauty of social media, whatever. You know your value. You instantly know your value. That's interesting. You know your value. What is your value? Well. I know this cable show that you produce, it's only 150,000 people watching this a day. I know it's 10 million people of my followers mm -hmm. that I can drop your ad and everything any fucking time I want. Mm -hmm. Do you want to play this game? Yeah, which one? And by the way, mine are a captive audience. They're right. not watching by accident on the TV that's just on in the lobby. Exactly. They're signing in, they're a captive audience, they trust me and they want to connect to me. And some of them are still trolls and assholes, yes. but for the most part, you have something. This business is all about showing something to somebody so they can sell ads and make money. Right, right, right. But now that's the beauty of it is now that we you 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 can you feel your power. You feel your power instantly. And then but then we didn't know because it used to be okay, you do a TV show, let's say you make fifty thousand dollars an episode. That's so much money. Right. But then of course you're giving away twenty five percent and right. then half to the government. So you're coming home with like twenty thousand twenty five thousand uh dollars for a show. That's still a fucking huge deal to someone that grew up without money. I should be so lucky. And then you're doing press for free. None of us were asking questions about right. like you do press for a 12. Here's the thing that people never understand. This applies to what we do and applies to like uh, professional sports and everything. You see somebody get a huge contract. 40 million a year. Fuck that. All he doing is throwing a football. Yeah. You're looking at that. For a company to be able to, for for an organization to be able to pay you 40 million a year, have you ever asked yourself how much fucking money they're making? No. So then you're making, let's say, $25,000 a year on that sitcom, and then the advertisers, Bounty and whatever, um, uh, fucking Trader Joe's, quit Legal Zoom, whatever, whatever the fuck, Evian, they're paying, and then we get, you get that 25% because all that, tons of money is going to the lawyers, the Everything. PR people. You're paying so many people's bills. And this is another thing you don't now understand, Now it goes too. directly to us. I don't know what you call it. You got the lawyers, you got the agents, you got Uncle Sam, and then you got the posse. Yeah, the, the poxy, the posse yeah. tax. Yeah, yeah. The the yeah. the the mm -hmm. and this is what people understand about yep. that. When you grew up with nothing or yep. you never was able to and it's so easy to get caught up in that. It's like, okay, I can afford it. And you know, it's not like you floss or anything, yeah. but you want to be able to say, yeah. Hey guys, I we got all it. gonna have a good time. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're gonna have a good time. But the problem I'm, is, is most of us get famous before we get rich, and they don't know right. that. Oh no, 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 no. Yo, they, listen, let me tell you something. They, they think if they you're on TV, no, I, you're a billionaire. What? Yo, they, 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 oh, I saw no, you on TV. No, I see like, you. No, no, it. I was on MTV. Right. That was a different thing. That, that is so fucking true, man. It's like, oh, I see you. Like, oh, oh, shit, you got a hundred thousand likes on that post. Let no, me no, get no, something. no, no, no. You don't get a, a dollar for every like. I don't know how you think this business works. Yeah, but. That's how it is, but that's the that's the um that's where people misunderstand like what we do. But like you said, the that the dopest thing is when you know what your value is, then you can negotiate in a different place. And if you can have the patience just to wait, that's a hard thing to do, yeah. especially if you're coming from nothing. But as we go on, people are starting to get more comfortable and more confident with that. And networks and stuff. I know they I know they um I know I know they're a little nervous. Mm -hmm. I know oh, they're a little for nervous. sure. Because it's like this. Another thing that on we a don't TV, need you anymore. You're not the only game in town anymore. We don't have to suck your dick, like literally, especially to work in a situation like like I say you and I, right? You like when we first start, we we want to be good. Some people, some mm -hmm. people just want the fame. But once you get past that, oh, you want to take a picture? Hey, everybody, mm -hmm. whatever. Because that fuels you for a while. Then once yeah. you get past that shit, you're like this. You know what? I've done everything I'm going to do with fame. I've fucked all the chicks I want to do with fame. Mm -hmm. I've got them to pop the ropes. I've got to pop, 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 pop. Now, and this is especially so when you get older, you're like this. I don't need all that shit. Just the simple shit. Yeah. That's part of the thing that made me want to be a, a river ninja. You, but I, also, let me ask, you realize that the, the richest actresses in the world, they're already at like 40 building their lotion empire, their branding empire. Reese Witherspoon has this giant clothing empire. Uh, 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 Gwyneth I saw Paltrow. a goddamn Chuck Norris infomercial the other night. Yes, you gotta be the Gwyneth Paltrow of fucking, like. What I did out of candles. 
I did that with candles. Not at her but level. Why, but can, a, why can't you have 50 fucking lotions and candles and shit? Like, I she's am. so... And the, they all have a backup plan, even though they're mo the most famous people in the world are yeah. working on a backup plan because they know that they're... But another thing they do, too, they get it. Like, some people get addicted to the whole process of starting something from scratch and watching it build. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Damon John, he's one of those people. Damon yeah. John has a great story. Oh, nice. Started, he came up with this company, FUBU. Oh, for yeah. For Us, By Us. He started with, like, five t-shirts, but what he would do was, like, get them in music videos and stuff. Smart. And I was telling a story the other day, how many times you, like, you look at his success now, but you don't, nobody, everyone acknowledged the level of rejection in the nose. Yeah. I give Joe Rogan as an example. Everybody, when they say a podcast, I'm going to be Joe Rogan. But nobody wanted to be Joe Rogan 15 years ago. Nope. Nobody wanted to be when well, nobody believed When he was that. on Fear Factor eating bugs. Yeah, that's, they didn't <laughs> want to do that. But the only thing, what people connect with is the finished product. Mm -hmm. And they ignore the entire process. Mm -hmm. And for what we do, the, if you think about it, we have the most in the process. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like when you get, when you say, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And when you get there, everybody's like, I can't believe you did it. You're like... I'm on to the next project. Yep, yep. Because we get off on the on, on the process. Right, 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 right. Yep. I can't believe like my way of thought and my thought and my way of thinking and me wanting to be an entrepreneur came from fucking kayaking. Yeah, well, because you get clarity. I think it's like when you're in the city too long, especially a place like LA, it's just like you get hypnotized. You forget the the the, the choices you have. Like I right. moved out here to the woods, and it's like you just sit out, and look at the mountain every day, and you're just like, I have more choices than I thought. And you're not waking up and just on autopilot, like Instagram, Twitter, blah, blah. You're like, right. let me sit back. Remember when I used to have ideas and visions, and not on my phone? And remember when I like, you know, that's the only time you can come up with something original and really sort of find out what your where your heart wants to go. When it's, you're at a when you're at a calm, relaxing, stressless. Because when I'm on Instagram, space. I'm just competing with other comedians. I'm like, they're doing clubs, they're doing a special. I need to do right. a special, and I'm my career trajectory is just based on me being competitive or or insecure of what I'm seeing on Instagram. Saying, whoa, whoa, what the fuck do I actually want to do when I'm not in compare and despair, and when I'm not like they have a special, I need to do a special. Do you know what I'm saying? I was making so many decisions out of fear, right. and then when you go out in the woods or you know spend some time with yourself, which so few of you us. Did, you do build a different level of confidence. Yeah, and you can look back on your career and just be like, I've done that. I don't need to do that. What about this? Like, this is so, um, this lotion, I feel like this is going to be, I feel like I, you're going to have more money than Chappelle soon, and it's going to make your relationship whoa, whoa, awkward. Slow down, slow down. It's going to make yo, your I relationship you awkward. You got. Slow down, no. <laughs> Slow down, Tom. <laughs> He's rich, bitch. <laughs> this motherfucker making 20, 30 million a pop. And it's all good. I gotta say, uh, it deserves it all. I don't know what I talk about. I was just a part. We do have to talk about the vaccine in a sec. You brassed about the, that. The black vaccine. The right? black. The black scene. Black scene. I noticed. I think Pfizer and Moderna. Okay, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson Johnson. Those are the, are the three. white vaccines. Okay. The Johnson Johnson. I think that's, that's... specific for the African American. Because it's one shot. It's one shot. They know shot. they can't get it back for two. Yeah, they know we scared of needles. It's like fuck that. They're gonna be late for the second. We're gonna be late for the second shot. It's that one shot. One shot, one kill. It's like the Marines' uh, <laughs> a phrase for for snipers. One shot, one kill. That's all we doing. But I'm, I'm going to get it because yeah. I. It's so funny because you and I had similar experiences with contracting COVID. Yeah. And I talk well, about. You know, it. I heard my doctor thinks I got it through my eyeballs. Really? Mm-hmm. This funny thing you say that yeah. your doctor, nobody knows how the fuck. That's why no one knows you fucking anything. You know, you can I know it wasn't an orgy I had. Why? Then, how? No, how do you not? Because you, because no, you, because no. you don't look him in the face, or you know, no, like, it's just kiss like, him. Orgy. I mean, Corona can't can't live when it's more than three people having sex. That's what the streets tell me. That's what the streets saying. But it's so funny. Tears because, kill it. Yeah, tears kill it. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't for you because if we have any eyeball, well, maybe the tears drain. Yeah, it. maybe I yeah drain it in my mouth and the droplets. Also, I was uh uh yeah I, I got it through whatever however I got it, but I had it for like three weeks and then could not remember my home address for like four weeks. See, I don't know what level you had. Like I think it's levels. And like when we when you talk about it, people just want to put it into one category. Mm -hmm. Like it's so much fear around yeah. it, which it should be. Yeah. Not downplaying any of that. But what people don't understand is like everybody is case by case. Yep. And I talked about this on my podcast. Subscribe to the Donnell Rawlins Do it. show on YouTube and uh, all his pod, pod, pod class, podcast platforms. Do it right now. Hit the button, bitch. Wild, okay. Wildest podcast out there. Most entertaining. Uh, and the best opening song of any podcast I've ever heard. Shout out to RZA for that. But it was interesting because... Um, for me, the experience wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. 
And it was kind of like, I couldn't really share that because people were like, oh, it could have been worse. Like we were talking on the phone before I came. The worst thing about COVID is the COVID shaming that comes with it. <laughs> people make you feel so fucked up that you're not dying. <laughs> Yo, they're like, like, wait a minute. They want you to be in more pain than you're in. They want, because they want to be able to say, see, told you. Yep. See, look at you out yep. here trying to live your life. Yep. Look at look at look at you out here trying to test people, make sure uh, things are okay. Oh, then when you test people, like in the case we did, oh, you guys are so privileged or whatever. Only thing we were trying to do was give some type of normal life. Only thing we were trying to do is like, open up a, of a, like in a case with Yellow Springs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The whole town economy popped up. Yep. Hotels being used. Mm -hmm. But more than that, people had a mental release. Mm -hmm. They had something to do and no matter what people say. I, Hope, and, something to look forward to, but it also set an example to us. Like putting that on social media, like made me go, oh shit, I can do it. Let's do this responsibly, safely. There is a whole generation of comedians that before the pandemic were just about to get their Tonight Show spot. We're just yeah. about to get their Netflix thing. We're just about, and then had to be on the bench for two. I mean, that's a long time to be off the fucking bench. That's a long time to not have income. Maybe not you and me, but I was like, if I was a comedian and I was just about to, you know, make it, or I had just gotten my sh a, a great set together to, you know, and then, everything is gone all your dates are off the schedule it just like drove me nuts that no one could even get social media content right. for their socials i mean there was gonna be a whole uh, 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 a bunch of comedians that when we came back they've moved home and they work at tgi fridays yeah. i mean this half this business you, imagine, isn't gonna be here when we get back imagine the people that said they wanted to start doing comedy when this happened there's nowhere there's they're nowhere. on only fans yep yeah and then when and even with my situation with COVID, it was so funny because you know i kind of like wasn't really talk to people because I just got sick of people like uh, not understanding, mm -hmm. you know, but like I would, this one guy called me, one of my friends, he called me, he said, so how you doing? I said, he said, how you feel? I said, I feel great. And he was like, oh man, I hope you feel better. <laughs> I'm like, what is better? What kind of great? You want a Tony the Tiger great? No, every, like, I everyone feel amazing. Wants, everyone wants their COVID to be worse than it is. You know what I mean? You're like, I'm doing okay. And they're like, all right, well, it's going to get worse. Like, you're going to. And it's like, why do you want me to be like, sick? And everything, like, I heard people like, I, what, 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 what symptoms do you have? I don't have any symptoms. You don't have any symptoms. You don't, like, they, they wish. They want bad news. People want bad news. And then also people, they'll shame you. They'll be like, you got to test, you got to test. And then you go, oh, we tested. And they go, well, those tests aren't accurate. It's like, well, it's, what is it? Pick it's one. Always, it's always, it's always going to be something different. And like, even in our situation, it's like, see, we told you guys, now you guys could be out there spreading it. Man, when it shit happened with our crew, mm -hmm. it felt like a military operation. Like, mm -hmm. like when you when you create a bubble, I don't care if it's NBA, uh, uh, Major League Baseball. But when you create a bubble, you know, any day, it could be popped. Yeah. Nothing is one hundred percent guarantee. But here's and the we don't know enough about this fucking thing to know if you're popping it. But by here's accident. the most important part, and in our case with us, is like. What happens when the bubble is burst? Yeah. Like in our case, when everybody was, people's was panic, whatever. And I remember Dave telling me, he said, Donna, this is the reason why we test. Yep. We test so we have the knowledge. We know when we- To make personal choices or whatever. And in our case, it was like, when 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 our bubble got busted, um, it was instant quarantine. Yep. It was everybody, even people that were there, married couples, people that were couples that were together, separated. Wow. It separated. And then the thing that I was like, one I bet thing they that, were relieved. Thank they, God. They was relieved. You had to but take another a break thing, from my fucking husband. But another thing, like in, in the case with us, the thing that, you know, I felt comfortable with is like the sense of teamwork. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we, we, we when it happened, you know, you worry about food and stuff like that. You worry about your life. But like when it happened for us, like when I found out that I was positive 30 minutes later, in front of my door uh, was every vitamin known to man. It was, mm -hmm. it was a thermometer. The zinc. The, the zinc. You know all the of them. The finger thing. The yeah, finger yeah. thing. The, 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 the Pulse the oxometer. O o o oregano oil. Like <laughs> shit. Like I had a pharmacy, right? And fucking thermo. The, the Joe the, Rogan mushroom vitamins. Yeah, Joe got something to the charcoal pills. Kettlebells. Yeah. Yep. Like everything. Right? And that was just like this. You felt like, you felt like, in our case, you felt, you felt like the way the teamwork kicked in, you felt like, Oh, we're gonna do everything to get through this together. Yep. Even with food situation, it was like, okay, now lunch will be delivered 1.30 every day. That's right. Dinner, 
seven o'clock. If you need anything from Walmart or whatever, and now people are like, yeah, you had the money to do it. No, I didn't. He did. I'm sorry. <laughs> you were at Marshalls. That was you could afford Marshalls on, from your your cream. Yeah, but of course I could get a, a couple of <laughs> you 1999 got that, that, joints. You got Marshall money. But everybody, it, it all kicked. It all kicked in to the point where, like, you had to test out like yeah. people that were, like people that were negative, became runners. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you, you became yes. runners, yeah. right? And like we it's... have, we were, we, you, you have a runner, you have the runners, and then when when you uh, when you test out, because to test out you have to have three negative PCRs in a row. In a row, which the PCRs take two days to come. Those are the real tests. No, no, no. They right? they got shorter than that. Oh, okay, like, so I think he had like the rush hours. runs. Yeah, he did get money from Comedy Central. Yeah. Damn, that check <laughs> came too quick. Those yeah, but, are expensive. But you had that. But like, it, when you think. Like, okay, you got a group of people that are being quarantined. Yeah. You would think when they finally test out and free and okay, you think they were like, I got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the case. Nope. It was like, like you wanted to like, hey guys, I'm negative now, but what can I do to help? Yep. That's how it was. Yep. We even had a, we even had a, we call it a yard day, right? Yard day where we get 30, 30 minutes of fresh air. Mm. We didn't go around the, 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 the hotel. We had to go back at the hotel. Mm -hmm. Uh, down 12 flights of steps. And the way you did it, like if you wanted to go on yard time, you had to raise your hand in the chat. Like, <laughs> I want to go yard time. And then they would bring your fresh N95 mask and gloves, right? Like mm -hmm. two mask gloves. And then you had a warden. They would go with you? Yeah, the warden was just somebody, guess how he got his, his job? Just by being negative just uh, michelle wolf in a beekeeper yeah, yeah, costume yeah. michelle wolf yeah michelle <laughs> just wolf. in a fucking hazmat like, suit like so when, fuck. You, when you do um when you do your yard time you had a warden right <laughs> and like some people just did, were very abusive of their powers <laughs> like on one of the text it was like this okay you maggots Right, all right, get in line, it's maggots. Like, it's like Stanford Prison Experiment. Everybody that like, starts becoming a fucking monster. Everybody's an asshole. We had one dude, I called him Little Hitler. <laughs> Gave him too much power, yeah, he had too Cena, much power. Cena was Little Hitler. But see, this is what's happening, is people are feeling, uh, because of what's going on with COVID, they're feeling this sense of power. Everyone wants to be the hall monitor. Everyone, you walk, you go to the grocery store, and it's like, where's your mask? And you're like, this is the fir this is the first time you got to do that. You get to yell Whitney, at me for can free. I say, can I say yes. something? I became that person. Oh shit. I meant to tell you, you didn't let me finish my story, right? <laughs> so when yard time was for me, I went on a couple, right? I, Whitney, I don't know how to tell you this. I, I became that asshole. I was Napoleon on steroids, right? <laughs> Yo, and so, but it was so funny because- Napoleon they, on they steroids. They knew I, the day that I tested out, mm -hmm. I couldn't wait to be warden for a day. <laughs> and see that, see that on a text thread, it, it, he was like this, all right, everybody. Well, today, yard time will be supervised by Donnell. Oh, shit. Right? Anybody that wants yard time, raise your hand now. Right? Oh, no. And then I just was, I didn't, I, didn't, I wanted to violate everybody. I was like, I was like, yeah. <laughs> and we're meeting up at 1,500 hours. <laughs> I know the average motherfucker don't know yeah, what that, military time military is. military experience. Yeah, so I knew like they're going to be late and they can't go to yard time. Right? So, hey, say hi to Maggie. Maggie. Listen, so, um, so. And I was like this. I thought it was so fucked up. Like, and it, and it, it was like 80 degrees outside. Yeah. And I know people were tired of being in the hotel room. And then I was like, anybody went yard time? <laughs> Nobody went to yard time that day. <laughs> they was like, fuck that. I'd rather be cooped up in this goddamn hotel than to do that shit. Um. Uh. So wait, you have not gotten the vaccine. You're out. You. you so you have 90 days. You got the antibodies now. Yeah. And you know, it's so funny because I told my. Whoa. I'm starting to get different gigs and stuff. Yeah. And but I told You're, my, are you I booking a road gigs. Yeah. Yeah. But I told cuz I'm kind of confident, not comfortable with the things I'm doing now. I'm getting good time with my son. Yeah. And then it's kind of different because although places are opening up, the money is different now because we only limited capacity. And we're at half capacity and and but, it's 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 uh Texas is a full capacity now yeah. inside, but yeah, and also not only that, clubs have not made any money for the past year, so, so they're trying to come back. We're also so kind of going, all right. I told my folks I was like, "You know what? I'm just going to chill until like May." But then once I got the COVID, I was like, I got 90 days of antibodies. I called yep. my age. I was like, yeah, let's, let's go. one of those one-nighters. Let's go. I'm flying. <laughs> I'll go to I'm Stress Factory. <laughs> people are shoulder to fucking shoulder. Yeah, I'll yep. do any venue. Yeah, but it's like, and it, but then when you do that, people are like, see, you're still out there playing games with it. I'm like, nothing is going to make anybody happy. And this is going to come to a point we talked about before. It's personal responsibility. Yep. What do you want to do? What chances are mm -hmm. you going to take that don't involve anybody else? Let us like yeah, and we're going to take risks. And if you, and if you, and you know, I just did Salt Lake City at half capacity and it was, wise know, guys? yes, yeah. oh, it yeah. was great. People, half the people had little cards saying they were vaccinated. People were so careful and respectful of each other. And it was, um, 
it was it was after like a couple minutes it just felt normal you yeah. know there was a second i felt like i was bombing and i was like because there's this thing when you see empty seats where you're just like wait a second you know there was like a couple stuff like that but it was fucking awesome and like there were a bunch of people that were like hey i can't come i live with my grandma and i'm like great i'll be back in a year dude i'm right, coming every city i'm doing at half capacity now i'm gonna come back to but like we I these places show. are gonna go out of business if we don't start going i did a show hollywood improv just pretty much like was my home club when i first got here yeah. the first people that would let me go anytime i wanted and they were trying, they've been trying. The thing about it, you got businesses that keep trying. Yep. You know, like, what can we do? What can we do? Not that we're trying to go crazy, but what can we do? Adapt. Yeah, so uh, they told me they were doing it. The patio was open. Yep. Right? And I, and I was like, oh, yo, I'll host, because they've been, like, hosting my podcast. So I feel like whatever they want me for. And I, was, I just did a podcast there. Like and a I live was, one? Uh, at uh, no, the just improv? not live, just me. I oh, just nice. I used the, uh, the, the, the room with the bar. Oh, nice. Before you go to yeah. the main room. So, um. And I just did a podcast and I was like, okay, they're trying something different. And I was like, do they even have an audience over there? Who's over there? And then uh, Ricardo said, Bud. I'm like- Friedman? <laughs> Look, I was like, Bud who? Yeah. Right? And he said, Friedman. And I went from like, not really tripping off the show, like, oh my God, Bud Friedman's gonna be there? The, own, the founder of the Impress. Like yeah. the number one guy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and I don't give the a fuck. The guy that used to decide if you had a career or not back in the day. And I'm telling you, if you are in the game of comedy and don't think of him as royalty, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my God, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? And he's like, seeing him, he was in a wheelchair. Wow. Right? Seeing him. And uh, the crazy thing was, the, one of the last shows I did before the pandemic popped off was at the Improv. Yes. I'm still on the, on the set list. Yeah. And then for me, because... Bud is like, he's very old. Yeah. And it's no hate and shit. Like, he's at that age, like. Someone should do a documentary. I hope someone's yeah, making a documentary. Course. It's He's at that age now where the last time you see him, you think it could possibly be the last time you mm -hmm. see him. And he took. Right now, it's the last time we could see anyone, frankly. That's true. <laughs> that's true. But it was just so dope for him. And I talked about, I was like, this is a brand that's been around forever and they're trying. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I yeah, we just did um, Irvine Improv Outside in Cars. I, I love that one. You know that this Friday, uh, uh, movie theaters are opening in Los Angeles this weekend. Really? Movie theaters, full capacity movie theaters and indoor dining is open this weekend. I know that. Well, we're going to see how we navigate through it. I will say from the beginning, we're more educated. Mm -hmm. We know simple things we can do. Could mm -hmm. uh, Cut down on the cases, wash your hands. Yeah. Masking up. I just hope people, everybody thinks like it's the worst thing to open stuff up. But I don't think it's a bad idea because now we're educated. People didn't know how you could get or anything. Before, so yeah. we're taking the precautions. Yeah. And also, um, yeah, the vac they say that in, uh, what is it, in California, the vaccine is going to be available to everyone in April? Uh, the, yeah. In the whole country, May 1st. May 1st in all, the whole country. All adults will be eligible. Uh, all adults will be el eligible May 1st for the vaccine. And then the, the, the thing is that the vaccines have become so politicized, that's going to be the next problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like taking the vaccine or not. And I know that people are really split on it. And there's a lot of trauma in the back black community around vaccinations. That a lot it's of not vaccination. We don't like shots. In Needles. What? <laughs> Needles. Get an oral away. Google, just give us a just pill. <laughs> Google Tuskegee and you'll get why exactly. some of your black friends are a little trepidatious about the fucking vaccine. I understand that. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, J. Marion Sims, I just like to bring up as well who is a, you know uh, infamously a, a doctor who experimented on black women there was a statue of him up in central park i believe up until about a year ago so right. there is a lot of trauma around vaccines and so uh you know but the, even with that say you like what the fuck are you gonna do like mm -hmm. even when it would happen with us it felt like a chicken pox party yeah you know it felt like yeah everybody come through but yeah. i was like i told dave i said yo we put the herd in the in herd immunity. immunity i said we put the herd in immunity you heard <laughs> And his fucking punk ass, in the darkest times, we always have a joke. When he got it, he was like, oh, man, I thought it was going to be you first. <laughs> but we got through it. Yep. We, we didn't. It wasn't a, a joke. We found some humor in certain situations. Mm -hmm. But we got through it. We were lucky that everybody in our crew that had it, everybody tested out. Mm -hmm. and then Did anyone go, have it bad? Like, like, what was the um, like diversity of symptoms within the I think the worst, the the, 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 the worst symptom one uh, one of our guys, he's a younger guy, yeah. um, we thought he was borderline and getting pneumonia. Mm. You know what I mean? But he pulled through. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just... It affects everybody so differently. And I think yeah. for me, and also it gets psychological. Like like um, Grace and Emily saw it. Like I was really losing my memory. I was, But I was also like dehydrated and I couldn't keep food down and eating. And then I... 
I, I was uh, I, I went off my antidepressants uh, like cold turkey because I couldn't keep anything down. So I was like, I don't know how much of this is the COVID, how much of this is the cold turkey, how much of it is the psychological shit? Because I was like, I can't remember shit. And then I was like, wait, I could never remember where my keys were. That's not COVID. Huh. That's just how I've always been. You then you'd know? be in denial. I was in yeah. denial. I was in loss of smell, taste, denial. Because I had this little. I got um, these jelly beans here to make sure we. Let me tell you what I did. I'll tell you. But if let you me have tell you what back. I did. Let me tell you what I did. I was doing my own little shit in my room, like I was like. Uh, I would. Everybody's like, you got any smell? I was like, I don't got any smell. Like, no loss of smell. I was like, I can still smell. And I had one of those essential um, diffusers or whatever that yeah. send out the lavender oils. And I had one. I was like, I could smell, but I, I realized that I had that shit damn near all the way in my <laughs> nose. I used to smell from across the room. I had that shit in my nose. And I was giving myself a taste. This is some crazy shit. I would turn the lights off in my room, right? And dump a bowl of gel, uh, 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 gummy bears. And I would taste them with no lights or just to see if. Oh, you knew what the you yeah. flavor was? <laughs> Were you right? I was like this. Oh, that's lime, motherfucker. I ain't got no goddamn Corona. There's no lime gummy bears. Just, let me do my fucking joke, all right? <laughs> fucking hating ass, coffee giving ass motherfucker. I'll take everything back. Give me my motherfucking okay, lotion back. So these jelly beans, hold on, hold on. What about these them? jelly beans are, this is a jelly bean roulette. So wait. You know Jelly Belly Jelly Beans? You know I don't. The, you so these What I do know that I've ne- what I do know the, the Jelly thing? Bean Can someone get me the box quick? What I, I do know we must have one in there. So this jelly is, beans are the most racist candy you can have. You why do is know that? Cuz you point out a black one. Pull out a black one. Uh Show me a black one. Why oh, are you wait. digging so long? No, but there's Where the fucking Maybe I ate them all because we love them so much. Nah, I want to <laughs> see them goddamn. Give me the big bag. They're uh licor- licorice is the black one. And guess what's so racist about that? It's that close to licorice. Licorice, licorice, come on, man. It feels like a stretch, come on, but licorice, uh, but licorice. I, I, feels like a stretch. Yo, y'all white people gonna stop this shit. Feels man. like a stretch, but I have just enough white guilt to let you have it. You can oh have it. Oh my god! But here's the thing: these are Jelly Bellies, and half of them taste like the normal delicious flavor. Like, oh, you about to give me that hot sauce but the shit? Other, the other ones are like are like uh, bad, like dog shit and like dirty. I don't want to be a part of this. So you. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of this. See how white people think shit is so much fun? Hey, Donnell, you want to take a chance or eating this shit? So, like, look, let's both eat. Which one do you want? What color do you want? Do you want to do try coconut, butter, popcorn, peach, juicy pear, tutti frutti? uh, Tutti frutti. Okay, so tutti frutti. This is either. I'm rooted. (laughs) It's going to either be tutti frutti or stinky socks. One of us. Wait. Which one's tutti frutti? The. Oh, the. This one. Okay, that. Okay. So that's either tutti frutti. Or stinky socks. I got it. I got stinky socks. Fuck. Ah. Ah. Tutti Fruity. Ah. On the root. Ah. Tutti Fruity. You know you better. Don't spit it out. You better swallow. Ah. <laughs> don't spit it out. Ah. Don't spit it out. Ah. I quit. Ah. I quit. Ah. I got Tutti Fruity. Ah. Oh, I don't want to play anymore. But smell this. Yeah, I know. Like, smell that. It smells like, how did it get... That's... Smell it. Ew! <laughs> Yo! That shit really smell like a fucked up ass sock. Oh, my God. Yo, oh. I don't want to play anymore. Okay, well, yeah. I, yeah, stop while you're yeah, ahead. That's going to be it for me. Oh my god! How'd you like the way the coffee smelled? You gotta try it. Uh, what? You didn't tell me. How'd you like the way? I get, coffee yeah, smelled? no, it smells fucking delicious. But I need a grinder. Yeah, get a grinder. Can you? You know what else you can do is the coffee pods. I am. I'm on the, it. The Keurig pods. Yeah. So good. And then even like instant coffee. I'm on it. Nice. What else? Like what other products? I just uh, that's it. I just have the, the the coffee. I am gonna partner up with. Um, I'm in the process of partnering up with THC Design to come up with my own. Um, Weed strand. Nice. I don't know if you follow my Instagram, but I started I this do. thing in the morning because I'm always up early. Your so IG always, lives. Yeah, I always say who's up, we up, who sleep, they sleep. So what? Um, they're at like six a.m. Uh, 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 Pacific time. Yeah, because what? I know it's tough for uh, on on a on, uh, PST time, but I kind of do that because I got a lot of followers on the East Coast and yeah, I yeah, do it around good. seven. So it's early here. The morning has started on the East Coast. But most people wake up around that time. We're yeah. comics, like most people are up. But I want, what I want to do is like, I, you know, I just want to encourage people to get inspired, be motivated and get up and do something. Mm-hmm. And you know, you do something crazy because recently I did a, my version of a polar plunge, right? I was in San Diego mm-hmm. and I dove into the ocean. It was inspired by a white chick that was there the day before. She walked past me, dethrobed and just fucking dove in the ocean. And then the next day I did it. 
And then as anytime you do something like crazy, people are like, I want to know what the fuck he was smoking. Right, right. So <laughs> I'm going to have a strand that inspires you to smoke what I smoke and do some adventurous stuff. So so when you, how stoned were you when you jumped into I, the... I wasn't. Oh. And I'm going to tell you, it made me feel so good. The reason why. Uh, your Instagram, I hate you. Look, the reason I hate why you so much. They your got mad at your me. Instagram is they got so mad at me. wrong. It's so wrong. And the reason why it was a reason why my it's entire so life, wrong. every year on the news, you hear see these people do the polar bear polar bear challenge. Mm-hmm. It's always white folks, right? And I always yeah. say they're crazy. But when I saw that chick do it, I was like, "What do you get out of it?" And then I was on live when I saw her do it. So my followers were like, "You should do it. You should do it." So the next day, I did it. And when I came with you, when I came out of that ocean, I felt like a new person. Like my body was tingling for three days straight. But the thing that was exciting for me is that my followers, it inspired them to want to challenge their fears. That's cool. And do something different. It had nothing to do with that white chick was bad as a motherfucker. Yeah. Do you should do and a show tra- called just like Donnell does white shit. You know what? That's a good idea. I know. I want to do something with you. Yeah, I would love that. We can just go and like do. Well, we talk, let's do it. Like I want to do a travel show. Some fun shit. Yeah, why, like, what? I mean, there's a, I think what's, what is becoming very clear to me is like. I love you and Annie, Annie's relationship too. <laughs> Annie Letterman, my fight, I'm obsessed. I love her. Yeah, love her. And I think that for me, for the longest time, I believe comedians were kind of conditioned to compete with each other because there was only so many pieces of the pie. But now she's found her own lane. And now we're all supporting each other. And the more we help each other, actually, the more successful we, the, like, all the ships rise with the water. And we're not, especially female comics, I don't know how what it's like with black comics. or It's just, I feel like we were, it was like it's me versus you for the because there was only one spot for a woman on the lineup for the longest time. Right. Well, that's how it was in Hollywood. People thought it was only one black comic could it be popping at the same time. That's but right. Like you say, everybody's got their lane. I feel so like good. this. I feel like this pandemic and podcasts have given comedians a chance to be like, no, we're all in the same fucking team, dude. It's hard for people to understand that, but you these know. networks want us to go. You get a sitcom and you don't, and then that puts us against each other. You know. Well, so, watch what what's going to be a chance. Watch what uh, Joe Rogan does in Austin. Watch what Dave Chappelle does in Yellow Springs. I can't wait. Watch what these people, people are making pivots. I know um, you, you're talking about that um, that uh, drive-in show. Mm-hmm. You know, I just want to say, I meant to say it on top of the show, but I uh, I did, uh, uh, I used to, for years I did the DC Improv Thanksgiving yeah. weekend. That one of my favorite clubs in the world. For 10 years I did it. And then last year we, we didn't do it in a club, but we did it at uh, RFK Stadium wow. in the parking lot. Sure. And it was, I did two shows, uh, 280 cars at each show. That's a sellout for that. And then they just approached me the other day. I want to do. I'm going to go back again, April 9th through the 10th. It's another driving show. The nice. weather's going to be better. And then I'm bringing. Is some, this I'm on bringing, your website? No, it just. Um, I haven't done. This is the first announcement I made of it. Oh, nice. But it's going to be uh, April, April 10th, 10. April 9th and the 10th, RFK Stadium. And um, Jesus. Uh, but it's not. It's just a part. It's a parking lot. It's wow. Not the but it's a good you in know, cars, and it's in cars. So in cars is actually pretty cool because the audio goes into the car radio station. Yeah, so it's like you're at a movie theater. It's like you're yeah, exactly, and you can hear it. And there's huge screens, and I actually think it's a better way to watch comedy with on those huge screens. And that's why, like, you go to some people, they encourage you to beep your horn to show that yeah. you. I don't think you need. I, I don't mm-hmm. like that. When you come out, they do, and then you're done. You don't, and you're done don't because the you got to realize that. It's, it takes a special community to understand that you got to get in your own zone. That's right. You're not going to get the uh, sound of laughter like that, but you got to realize they're a captive audience. Mm-hmm. Like you say, it's, your, your, your FM uh, player is playing it, and you look at it like you're at a drive thru so. And give us a second to find our pacing. Do you know what right. I mean? That's the thing about it is because the first time I did a drive and I was like, this is weird. There's a weird delay. I'm not feeling the contagious energy. I work, you know, and then I was like, with him, we've done so many fucking crazy shows, whether yeah. it's bowling alleys or strip clubs or whatever. Like, we can adapt to these crazy. The good ones can. We yeah exactly. The good ones can. We can just give like, us a second. You know. That's it. But it's good, and it's given us opportunities. But I say, uh, in about eleven. Are months, you moving to Austin? Place. Am I losing you too? No, I'm not going to move to Austin. Okay, but, but we'll I'm be su- there a lot. I'm super, 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 super connected to Yellow Springs, Ohio, mm-hmm. because uh, like my son really enjoyed it. You know, and do I you got consider such moving a, there? I, I wouldn't because his mom is so connected mm-hmm. to this. And, you know, it's it's just a tough one. But I think, like, I was like, I, I was wondering how Dave Chappelle got to Yellow Springs. Mm-hmm. And him and his and mother. he went to Africa first. No, 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 it was after. <laughs> but his mother and father, I think they separated at a young age. Mm-hmm. And his dad took on a teaching job in Yellow Springs. So I was like, how did he oh, get wow. out here? So he would spend summers with his dad in Yellow Springs. So that's something that I would look forward to because... You know, the community that's there, my son loves nature. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't need to 
get any new friends and shit. And like everything that I need to support his happiness and my happiness is there. So and also fun. half the half of our shows are on the East Coast. Like it is good to have to to operate from. A, like I'm thinking about getting a place in like Virginia or something, kind of where I'm uh, from. From maybe back in D.C. So that I have a even if it's like an apartment to be able to do our East Coast shows and it not be a full day of travel all exactly. the way back to L.A. You but know. Look, but the thing about it, this. What the pandemic has done, it made us think outside the box. That's right. It, 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 you, you feel empowered, and then you're making like calculated mm -hmm. decisions on what your next move is going to be. Yeah. And then another thing is like, motherfuckers ain't rushing to be Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood. Nope. You know? And then last question, are you on Clubhouse? I, uh, yeah, I am, but it's tough for me because it, I, it, it's just like we making everybody a moderator. Yep. Everybody think they're an authority. And I'm so, you know me, I'm loud. I come in loud, you, blow a room up, and yep. then I leave quietly. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay. Leave quietly? Yeah, yeah, I'm like leaving quietly. Like, gah, 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 gah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to leave quietly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just interested uh, if, if a lot of comics are doing shows on there and what that looks like. And it seems like some comics are making money and, and getting opportunities and there's a lot of access. And, you know, I'm We're about to open, like, not open up, but we're going to, things are about to, I know people are like, it's not over. We know it's not, but things are going to get a lot better. I love you, man. <laughs> I love you. Thank you for, uh, where are you going Monday? You're leaving. I'm going back to Austin. We're going to start doing shows. Uh, we're doing five shows in Austin at Stubbs, Stubbs again. Shout out to all the people at Stubbs. And it's then we're going to do three um, shows in, in, in Houston at the um, House of Blues. Nice. Yep, so it's going to be some. Full capacity now in Texas. No, but what? Inside, I think. But we're still not going to take those chances. Oh, I know nice, it is, nice, but we're nice, gonna nice. Still still. And Dave is the only person that taste, tests everybody in the audience. As easy as it is to be like, we can be wide open, we still don't feel comfortable with that. So nice, that's we're going to continue to do the things that we do to make so people So people safe. come early and they have to test kind of before they come yeah, in. Yeah, but the system is so sharp, man. They turn a lot of people around really, really quick. Wow, that's Again, wild. Again, the testing is no cure, any of that. It's only By the way, he should start a testing company. Who's going to start the company, the quick testing company? Out? He should start it for venues and theaters and clubs. A thing that you walk through a fucking TSA, whatever looking thing, and you're tested. Like, who's There's a lot of people on our team that um are venturing into that business. Good. Now. Yeah, Good. wellness flow. Because you guys they are figuring to... out how to do it quickly and fast. Like, yeah. own it. We only, only The only thing we can do is to try it. That's the only thing we can do. Yeah. I love you. Um, love thank you for giving me Maggie. Thank you for giving me that coffee. It was delicious. Um, I love you. Uh, Donnell Rawlings dot org. Donnell Rawlings dot com. Okay. Org. Yo, I'm not. I don't live an org lifestyle. <laughs> org is reserved dot for nonprofits. Oh, org is for <laughs> saveabitch.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you gotta get this lotion, you guys. I have, you know that I'm the queen of a shiny face. I'm the queen of moisture, and this is truly the fucking oiliest uh, body butter I've ever had. I mean, I'm literally, feel my it's hand. Oil, it's, my moisturizer. Feel my hand. I mean, it's like we could, look, it feels we good. couldn't hold on to it. Try. This is the, this See is if the we part. Can, like, jungle fever, stop it, girl! Oh, shit. Donald Rawlings, I love you! Love you too. Thank you for coming, baby.